buddy Judy Greer for our My Pet Tale series, telling us all about her great love for her dog, Mary. Coming up later, we got a flashback interview with William Daniels, who played the lovable Mr. Feeney on Boy Meets World. Plus, we're also today going to pay tribute to the great Bruce Willis with a clip from our vault. But first, here are today's pop start headlines. Harrison Ford <laughs> is first up, and it's the first time in nearly six decades in acting that Harrison Ford's going to be headed to a television series. The Indiana Jones actor is going to lead a new comedy called Shrinking. He'll do it for Apple TV+. Plus. He's going to play a successful yet blunt therapist who shares a practice with two protégés, one of which is going to be played by How I Met Your Mother actor Jason Segel. Oh, okay. And behind the scenes, this is a comedy dream team. Segel's going to also produce and write the series with Ted Lasso's oh, Brett Goldstein yes. and Scrubs creator Bill Lawrence. Get out! Yeah, it's like the dream team here. Oh my God. But don't worry, Harrison's not leaving the silver screen anytime soon. He just recently wrapped the Indiana Jones 5 movie, and that is slated to hit theaters next wow. year. That's going to be a good one. Okay. Next up, Britney Spears, the pop icon, says she's ready to put her story in print on Monday. Britney used a lengthy post on Instagram to confirm that she's writing a memoir describing how her conservative shit made her feel less than. And now the deleted post. I don't understand why these people write all these yeah, big why, posts why? and they take them down. Um, anyway, she wrote, I'm writing a book uh, at the moment, and it's actually healing and therapeutic. It's also hard br bringing up the past events in my life. I've never been ex able to express openly. I can only imagine that I do sound childish, but I was extremely young when those events took place. This announcement follows the reports that earlier we said uh, in the year that she did that book deal worth $15 million, wow. and Brittany has not confirmed a release date or publisher for the project. Okay. Next up, Pistol. That's the name of the upcoming series set to tell the story of the punk rock icons, The Sex Pistols. It's a six-part show based on guitarist Steve Jones' memoir, Lonely Boy. It's going to explore how a group of working-class kids made a lasting impact on punk culture and music in the 70s. Oscar-winning director Danny Boyle, who's worked on a bunch of great projects, and some, some biopics you might know, 127 Hours of Steve Jobs, leads the project behind the camera. And here's a sneak peek at the trailer gonna kick this country awake if it kills us. The monarchy has stolen our future. The fury of the forgotten generation. It's time for youth revolution. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I want to burn this city to the ground. I don't want musicians, I want saboteurs, assassins. One word, destroy. I mean, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Danny Boyle, Train Spotting. What a great movie that was, <laughs> too. Uh, the show's got a great cast, including Game of Thrones star Maisie Williams. Pistol is the name of it. It premieres on May 31st over on Hulu. Next up, this was a great story yesterday. Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel. We talked about how the late night Jimmy's did that big April Fool's prank. They traded shows. They swapped networks for one night only. Well, on Monday's show, Fallon and Kimmel revealed some of the behind the scenes work that went into preparing that big switcheroo. And here's a look at their rehearsals. How you doing? Nice to see you. This is just you, the speaker. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Just, what, say it again? Jimmy, let's you stop. Spit into you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Is <laughs> something I do? What, what have you heard? I don't spit in things. I, a spittoon was on my rider? I already forced everyone to go Fallon, Fallon. And we sent it to Jimmy, and we haven't heard back. We're not going to fight about this, OK? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I took your lunch. It's, it's Jimmy. I, oh, I started talking. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he saw cool. Jimmy's line. He's yeah. like, oh, Jimmy yeah. says this. Like, oh, that was yeah. that was for you, not for me. You know, that, it was a funny bit. There was a woman out on the plaza yesterday. Yeah. She said, you know, we've been waiting to see Jimmy Fallon for like five years. And we came on Friday. Uh, and, one day. Right, and then Jimmy Kimmel came out. And my husband was like, we don't even like Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, They're lucky to get a Jimmy. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. You got a Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, and finally, we've got big birthday love going on between some of TV's most <laughs> iconic duos. First, check out this lovely little tribute from our friend Mariska Hargitay oh. to her Law & Order co-star Chris Maloney. Hargitay sharing this snuggly snapshot in honor of Maloney's 61st wow. birthday. The actress writing in the caption, Chris Maloney, you're aging like a fine wine. Hashtag, he still got it. Oh. Now, we know they're close friends in real life, and we can only imagine the fuel this is adding to the yes. will they, won't they. they. Will. Uh, for Benson and Stabler fans out there. And speaking of friendships decades in the making, how about this other duo, Beverly Hills 90210 buddies, Jenny Garth and Tori Spelling. 
Tori shared this retro photo of the BFFs in honor of Garth's 50th birthday this week, writing in the caption, you are more beautiful today than you were 30 years ago. You are truly my sister in this lifetime. Well, Isn't that nice? I that they're good friends. Good friends. I didn't know that. Yeah, very yeah. good friends. Cool. And that is your pop star today. All right, a few more headlines for you. First up, Olivia Rodrigo, the young pop star, cleaned up on Sunday night at the Grammys, earning three awards thanks to her hit singles, Driver's License, and that debut album, Sour. But unfortunately, those golden statues are a little bit heavier than they look, apparently. While posing for photos backstage, one of Rodrigo's trophies tumbled out of her arms and hit the ground, the award snapping into two pieces. She shouldn't feel too bad. This has happened before to other big-time Grammy winners. Taylor Swift comes to mind in 2010 when she lost an award to the same fate after trying to balance four of her trophies for a photo op. Maybe next year the Grammys could help these artists out who win all these awards with a podium, or a shopping bag. And finally, Lisa Kudrow and Mira Sorvino. Last night, the Romy and Michelle co-stars stopped by the Late Late Show with James Corden and chatted about their recent reunion on stage at the SAG Awards, because since then, fans have been dying to know if there are any plans for a sequel. We'll check out what the on-screen and real-life besties had to say. There's a lot of talk about, lots of talk, about whether or not there, there would ever and could ever be a sequel to the film, which I... I sort of feel like I sort of like I think I'd be really interested to watch that. Is that something that would happen, Lisa? It could. Why not? I mean, anything can happen. Would you want this to happen, Mira? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I've I've been wanting it to happen forever. There seems to be a hunger for Romeo and Michelle still, which is wonderful, and it might be the most important thing I've ever been a part of. Oh. oh. Yeah. Like that's crazy. What it. A lot of love for that around here, too. Savannah Guthrie comes to mind. So count us in for the Romy and Michelle's 40-year high school reunion. All right, we've covered your headlines, and there's a lot more coming up, including actress Judy Greer opening up about the many, many ways her lovely dog, Mary, has changed her life. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Judy Greer is the latest guest for our My Pet Tale series, where we ask folks about their pets and how they've shaped their lives. Judy has a beloved dog named Mary, and it turns out Mary spent a lot of time on set while Judy was shooting one of her latest projects, The Thing About Pam. A uh, little furry creature, her name is Mary Richards, named after the title, Mary Tyler Moore's character from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I'm too young to remember it being on television, but um, I watched it, I guess I saw it, you know, probably on like TV Land or one of the cable channels in some hotel room when I was on location working and feeling homesick and it made me so happy. And I ordered all seasons on DVD and I used to travel with them so that I could watch them on my laptop when I was traveling for work because it was so comforting to me. I also 
really responded to the Mary Richards character because it was pretty groundbreaking when you think about it. I mean, this was a woman who broke up with her fiance, moved to the big city, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in order to pursue a career in broadcasting, which again, at the time was very unheard of. Well, I had the most uh, incredible male dog. His name was Buckley and I had him for years and he was my love and my roommate and my best friend. And you know, like all animals, unfortunately, he had to go live on the forever farm with his mom and about a year went by after Buckley left us and my vet Dr. Werber who I loved um, called me one day and was like hey I think it's time and I was like it's not time and he said just I work with a rescue they need a foster over Thanksgiving for this little dog would you just foster her and so that's when I picked up Mary and um, she basically curled up in a ball and just like I carried her around in a tote bag for two weeks and then it was the day before the adoption where I was supposed to take her and then all the people come and like I just lost my mind and I I called my husband and I'm like I can't, I can't get rid of her and he's like oh my gosh I'm about to shoot a live show fine we can keep her like please don't bother me at work anymore so my timing was really good but there was really something so special about having this little creature with me um, that did like, I think, lower my blood pressure a lot. And I, I can't think of an exact moment in time when I knew she was staying with us, but it just felt like, oh, this is a good thing for me. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell people why it's so important to <laughs> adopt instead of shop. I mean, there's just so many animals that need homes. And there's even now so many like breed specific rescues that if you're like, well, I have to have this kind of breed of dog or I need, you know, hypoallergenic or whatever, like you can find that. There's just so many animals that like are needlessly euthanized. I mean, every day that could easily be adopted into homes. And I think that, you know, Fostering is such a great way to see how a pet's gonna work in your family. I mean, you can find such great animals and they're so happy to have a home and to not have to live in those cages. And Mary's like this tiny little cute, like teddy bear sort of fox raccoon looking dog, but she's really scary if she wants to be. So that took some getting used to and a lot of training. And she has chilled out a lot. She's really feeling self-confident. She's really feeling herself these days. Um, I started traveling with her when I go on location to shoot things and I brought her with me to New Orleans to shoot the thing about Pam and she went over everyone on set and in fact Renee Zellweger's character Pam Hupp has a dog and I can't tell you how many of my friends texted me after that first episode aired and they were like is Mary in the thing about Pam? It's like, no, there is only room for one actress in this family. Um, but Mary was there and she was like running around and she was such a cutie. Sometimes when she's like a little judgmental and mean, I like to think that she's like my alter ego. My favorite thing with Mary, I love, I love going on really long walks and Mary really loves to go on long walks. We've walked seven miles in one day together. I mean, she'll just walk and walk and walk. I think she would walk until she would drop. The thing about Mary that's funny, like the thing about Pam, I just realized I said that. But the thing about Mary that's funny is that she plays really hard to get, but she's so tiny and cute that people keep like, they just keep wanting more of her. They keep wanting her. If she lets, if she lets you pet her once, then you just like want to keep petting her, but like the next day she might be like, I don't really like, I'm not like feeling you today. She really does march to the beat of her own drummer, and she's uh, she's not someone that can be pinned down. You know, like she might like you one day, but then she might not like you ever again. Every day is a new day with Mary. That's what I always tell people. Mary has made my life better in every single way. I used to get so homesick when I was on location, and now like when I have her with me, it's so much better. She's she's gives me a reason to get up in the morning and like on a day off when sometimes I'm like, mm, I miss my husband and I'm homesick. She like, I think genuinely brings a lot of joy to work. Like she runs it all around hair and makeup when we're in the trailer and she loves it and everyone brings treats and gives them to her. And she just, animals bring a lot of joy and they definitely like calm people down, I think. And so, um, yeah, she's just made my life better in every single way. Um, Minus the dog hair, that, but she's little and it's not that bad. But I do usually have a lint roller with me. I have an hour long answer for what I loved about the thing about Pam, but I guess 
Today, it is just all the relationships that we made with each other when we were shooting this. It was a really amazing group of people. Renee Zellweger, who also was an executive producer, so she was my scene partner and my boss. Can be a little nerve wracking sometimes, but not with Renee. Like, she's just so lovely and wonderful and supportive and happy. And so when someone is like that on set, you know, everyone, I think falls into line and it was just we had so much fun and so today my favorite thing is like the friends I made on it and I just put on the wig and went here I go and it was uh it was really easy once I had my wig on to feel like a completely different person and we should mention you can catch a new episode of the thing about Pam tonight that's convenient on NBC up next lessons from the Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. And we're back. For seven years, William Daniels played the very thoughtful Mr. Feeney on Boy Meets World, and he just marked a special birthday, 95. So in his honor, we thought it'd be fun to have a little flashback interview with him and his wife, where they spoke about his time as one of TV's most beloved teachers. What was my uh, favorite part about doing Mr. Feeney on Boy Meets World? There is no greater aspiration than to have love in our lives, Mr. Matthews. I wanted to make sure, and uh, I made sure the producer understood that I didn't want to make fun of a teacher. Uh, they're too important to this country and they're underpaid. So I wanted him, Mr. Feeney, to be written with respect, which they were kind enough to do and so I was happy uh, to do that and it worked out very well. What was it like for us to work together when I joined the show? We've worked together so much. Oh, uh, well, it was easy, you know. Uh, we work well together. We respect each other's uh, talents and uh, we know each other so well that uh, we can make certain that she learns her lines. <laughs> we and work very differently, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then we, we would shoot it. I love you all. Well, I, I think your favorite, I know what your favorite episode was, was the, the last one. Oh, yeah, that was nice. They all leave the classroom, you know. And Mr. Feeney, who's been kind of a hard-nosed guy, 
is alone in the, in, the, in the room, and he looks over at the empty discs, and he says, um, I love you all. And I thought that was a really nice way to end it. Class dismissed. With the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. What do we remember about the episode when we get married on the show? I, I, I enjoyed it. I remember I, I loved the dress, but we had trouble with my hair that day. So we ended up just pulling it back. And it was a... It's fun, you know, for older people to get married on camera. Like for older people to have love scenes on camera. That's fun. What do you remember, Bill? I remember the kids? that they were kids and they fooled around a lot. And I kind of take my work seriously, so I would avoid them and stay in my dressing room until it was time to come out and do my scene. While they fooled around and, and chatted and giggled and laughed and messed it up and, and then took it over and over again. And finally, I would come out and do my scene with them. And uh, uh, I, I think it worked that way. But you grew very fond of them. Hmm? You are very fond of them, oh, really. I, I he was. loves it when we go back and do these conventions mm -hmm. uh, and get to see them again. He yes. loves that. Yeah, I do. Mr. Feeney, you're up. Feeney! Feedback. It's all, oh God, that's incredible, right, Bill? Yeah. Feedback from teachers. It's, it's amazing. Um, teachers uh, who felt uh, watching the show, watching Feeney, uh, inspired them. Uh, we get all kinds of... Uh, Tearful. They cry. Oh. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. It's incredible, uh, the feedback. And it's gone on for so long that it amazes it's me. It's unbelievable to us. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, but there it is, and uh, I enjoy it, and I enjoy uh, meeting with them and uh, talking to them about their careers as a teacher. Believe in yourselves. Dream. Try. Too good. Do you well, have any favorite lessons that Feeney imparted on the show? Well, those uh, those three uh, th things at uh, the end. Yeah. What was it? Um, do good. Do good. Uh, try. Dream. Dream, and uh, and then do good. And a big happy belated birthday going out to you, Mr. Daniel. Still to come from our vault, Bruce Willis on the set of Die Hard. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who've made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> season two. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Of course, well wishes continue to pour in for Bruce Willis after it was revealed that he's been diagnosed with aphasia and is going to be stepping away from acting. He's a star with nearly 40 years of wide-ranging roles under his belt. And in his honor, we'd like to play this moment that we found from our vault. This is Bruce Willis speaking to us in 1988 while on the set of one of his most defining movies, Die Hard. Bruce Willis is working on a new film now, an action-adventure film called Die Hard. It was on location for that film that I talked with Bruce about how he came by the lead role. I wasn't looking for anything. I was expecting to work through the fall on Moonlighting. We got the news that Sybil was pregnant. Uh, the Moonlighting producers came to me and said, you're going to have roughly 11, 12 weeks off. And it just so happened that uh, the deal fell right into that slot. And uh, we put it together in about a week's time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to short sheet the, the storyline just mm -hmm. a little bit. But John McClane is a, is a cop who comes back and tries to patch things up with his wife on his the opposite wife. coast and goes into a building that is being taken over by terrorists and unbeknownst to them starts working against them. And the, the, the film is a battle between John mm -hmm. and the terrorists, right. correct? Yes. Um, how risky was it for you? I mean, physically. I mean, are you asked to do a lot of things that... Uh, that maybe the, the producers of Moonlighting and Glenn Karen wouldn't be real thrilled about? Well, I made the choice to do a lot of my own stunts. I, I think it always helps, you know, production value. But on a personal level, I really enjoyed doing a lot of my own stunts. This film satisfies me on a lot of levels. Uh, it satisfies me as, as an actor. Uh, it satisfies the little boy who still lives in here, because I get to shoot guns and kill people and be a hero and, and, uh, and be uh, shot at and be wounded and bleed. And I really haven't uh, been given the opportunity to do that. Let me give you a quote. Um, this one's from director John McTiernan on this one. Quote, Bruce wants to make the crossover from comedy to action. You buy that? Well, um, and he didn't say temporary. I love doing comedy. I, I, uh, I think it's one of the best jobs on the planet to try and make people laugh, if you can. Uh, but this, this type of film uh, interests me a lot. Uh, action, uh, more of a dramatic slant is something that, that I spent a lot of time working on when I was in New York working on stage. And I really hadn't done a whole lot of comedy prior to working on Moonlighting. Uh, Moonlighting really gave me the opportunity to uh, stretch myself in a lot of comedic ways. We also do, you know, some fairly serious stuff on, you know, Moonlighting. But this is this film is a big departure for me. Um, not a lot of jokes in this one. It movies are your future, right? Not TV. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's. I mean, is Moonlighting, and I'm not trying to send you into premature retirement, but Moonlighting's basically run its course for you? Well, I have, uh, I have two more years to do on that show. Um, the biggest problem for myself, and I think for Sybil and for Glenn Carr and everybody who works over there, is we have reached a point where, as I said, we've done um, something like 52 or 53 hours of that show, which is the equivalent of doing the same movie 27 times. As you look to your movie future, mm -hmm. Do you need this one to be a hit? I think we need them all to be hits, Brian. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, it never hurts. I mean, let me bring back a quote that you gave me when we talked a year ago. God, you remember back that far, huh? Oh, yeah. I read the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> Parts of it were actually lucid. Um, you said that Michael J. Fox had told you once upon a time that one thing that's certain about being hot is that there's going to come a day when you're not hot. Absolutely. Are you conscious of it slowing down? Uh, not really. Um, it's very difficult for me to talk about myself or about my work or my career in the third person. Um, I'm always a, a little hesitant to uh, place myself on some kind of scale of how hot I am now, how hot I was last year, how hot I will be next year. I don't, I've never really thought of myself as being that hot. I, a lot of this has come from, uh, from the press and from public reaction to my work. I try and spend as little time as possible uh, judging myself on that kind of scale. And many are thinking of Bruce Willis and his family, and of course, we're extending our well wishes 
his way as well. And that's going to do it for this edition of Pop Star Plus. Coming up tomorrow, a fun conversation with the very funny Amber Ruffin and a whole lot more. We hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Wellness Today. I'm Chanel Jones. Today we're celebrating Women on the Move, exploring how women have used movement to empower themselves and their communities over the last 70 years. We'll take a look at how exercise changes throughout a woman's life from puberty to menopause. Plus, we'll learn what surprising item inspired the design of the first sports bra and the best ways to eat before, during, and after a workout. And we'll introduce you to a new fitness platform that's making room for everyone to get moving. This is Women on the Move. Although today it's common to see a woman heading to the gym or out for a jog, it's still a relatively new phenomenon, a movement decades in the making. From jogging and jazzercise to Pilates and hits, over the years women have celebrated their bodies through exercise, but it hasn't always been this way. In the 1950s and 1960s, exercise was considered pretty taboo for women. There were fears that it could damage her or actually make her uterus fall out, and sweat was considered taboo and unladylike. Thanks to the work of dozens of fitness visionaries like Bonnie Pruden, Lottie Burke, and Jane Fonda, women were excited to get up and move. Now go into toe steps. Put your heels up. As fitness for women became more accepted, it also became more expected. There are so many kind of implicit messages being sent to girls and women from a very young age that to be a woman is to be forever working on your body and to view your body as a project. And the community has not always encouraged everybody to participate. Women's fitness has a history of, of catering to mostly white, middle to upper class women. But everyone deserves to have access to the truly beneficial things that, that fitness can do for our, our mental, physical, and emotional health. The lessons learned through exercise empower other areas of women's lives. Strength begets strength. When you feel physically empowered, when you feel good in your own skin, that can translate to how you make your way in the world. Whether you like to run, dance, or stretch in your home, in the park, or at the gym, women have found their favorite ways to break a sweat. I think we're really at the beginning of a moment where we're, we're learning to harness exercise in a way that's truly about feeling good and, and feeling strong. Using exercise to harness our power. I love that. All right, let's talk a little bit. Joining us now is OBGYN, Dr. Camila Phillips, the founder of Cala Women's Health in New York City. And she's here to explain why exercise is so important at different points in a woman's life. Thank you for talking with us today. Thank you for having me. So we know that a woman's uh, you know, body continues to change over time, but we should be exercising all throughout. So let's break it down into puberty, pregnancy, and then menopause. We'll right. start with puberty, if you will. Um, you know, when girls go through puberty, their bodies change. And they've noticed, teachers have noticed, and experts have noticed, that's when a girl almost pulls back sometimes. Before, she's running all over the place, running around the playground, and then she starts to get a little self-conscious. She may not want to exercise. How do we push through that? You know, why, and why is it so important for teenage girls to stay active, right? Puberty is such an awkward time for so many young people. I remember it myself, just feeling strange in your mm -hmm. own body. So being active is really important in helping them reconnect. And I like to think outside the box with activity. It doesn't have to be running. It can be soccer, basketball, contact sports, really thinking outside for them to help them engage in different parts of their body. It helps them maintain um, a sense of pride and enthusiasm about what wellness and strength can be and that they embody that. And your doctor, so if a girl is having cramps, exercise I know can help, right? Right. It's really important to remember that when we work out, your body releases an amazing assortment of endorphins, which are natural pain 
painkillers. And so before we go to reach for some um, pill, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes moving your body, jogging around the block, doing a dance party in your living room can help release those endorphins and help with menstrual pain. I love that. All right, let's talk about pregnancy, another big life event, if you will, exercise. I know it certainly depends on the woman, so you definitely need to check with your doctor. One of my pregnancies, I was walking all over the place. My sister's like working out when she's pregnant. My twins, I couldn't even walk, so right. good night, everybody. Right. Uh, but what's the thought when it comes to exercise and pregnancy? Yeah. Well, we've really had a paradigm shift as it relates to being active in pregnancy. So the days of laying on the couch are no more. Mm -hmm. We encourage women who um, are having normal, safe pregnancies to get out there and move your body. It helps reduce the risk of C-section, gestational diabetes and hypertension, and really can help with the marathon of labor. Are there any exercises that you shouldn't do when mm -hmm. you're pregnant? So you really want to use your best judgment. Anything that involves contact is probably sure. not the sure. best idea. Yeah, yeah. So soccer, basketball, those kind of things. You can do a stationary bike because your risk of falling is, is minimal, but you want to use your best judgment. Swimming, low impact exercises are best. And what about post-pregnancy, what would you say? Exercise is key post-pregnancy. So when you're active while you're pregnant, it helps your recovery postpartum. Women who have gained the extra weight tend to lose it faster. It helps with your mental health and warding off postpartum depression because you're still staying active and engaging and also can help with toning your core and getting back to your regular clothes. All right, so now I think I'm in the, what am I, almost 44. There's perimenopause and then mm -hmm. menopause. There's, and it gets harder, right. frankly, to, to, to lose the weight or to try to stay fit but what are your what's your advice once a woman starts to go through menopause like I understand um, you recommend that they start using weights for example I think a lot of women are often very afraid of picking up weight I am sometimes yeah, well, because I'm, I'm for you know you don't want you're worried about bulking, bulking up. up yes <laughs> even a 5 10 15 pound weight is gonna help you maintain your muscle and really tone a lot of women complain of extra unintentional weight gain and that's what weights are gonna help you do also picking up weights are going to maintain your bone health, which is super critical when you're menopausal. Osteopenia, osteoporosis, where the bones weaken and can actually fracture, it's a big deal. And so weight-bearing exercises, including picking up some weights, are going to be great. So have you, obviously you have, and doctors have seen the difference. Is it preventable? So let's say in your family you have a history of either osteoporosis or you see some folks in your family who are dealing with those issues. If you start now, can you perhaps avoid the, what feels like inevitable? You might be able to warded off but that is a risk factor having yeah. a family history of it and so paying attention to it early recognizing it early and intervening with weights is definitely going to do you well okay such good advice thank you so much thanks. for talking with us today thanks for having me all right coming up now we're inspired learn how three friends transformed the way women exercise forever and later tips on how to fuel your body before during and after that workout that we promised to do all that and more just ahead on wellness today to cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We 
are back with Women on the Move. For many women, the idea of doing a workout without a good sports bra seems impossible. But in the late 70s, that wasn't the case until three women came together to invent this groundbreaking essential. The jogging craze of the 70s got Lisa Lindahl up and running. But the new exercise made one thing painfully clear. So were you working out one day in college and you said, you know what, this regular bra just isn't working? I had started running. I loved it. It literally changed my life. And the only uncomfortable part about it was my bouncing boobs, frankly. <laughs> Regular bras just weren't supportive enough for fitness for women with larger chests. So Lisa turned to her childhood friend, Polly Palmer Smith, and her colleague, Hinda Miller, both costume designers, to build a better bra. But they weren't having any luck until Lisa's husband put a jock strap on his chest as a joke. My then husband yeah. came down the stairs and said, hey ladies, here's your jock bra. We thought that was so funny and I, so I took it off of him and pulled it on myself, and I went, Polly, I'm not moving. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Polly took two jock straps and sewed them together, and that design informed the final product, which they called the jog bra. And our goal was to make it a climb-in bra, not no hooks, no straps that would fall off. So that was my mission. While Polly became an Emmy award-winning costume designer, Lisa and Hinda ran the booming jog bra business for more than a decade. It grew because women were demanding products that supported them in their new active life. So it was the one-two punch of Title IX and the sports bra that allowed girls and women to really step up and step into their own power. Um, we have the crisscross straps in the back. Now, the jog bra resides in the National Museum of American History's collections, in part because of the invention's impact on women. Gave them freedom of movement. It allowed them to, you know, do more vigorous exercise. This opened up a lot of areas for them that they didn't feel comfortable in before. But for the inventors of the first sports bra, it's seeing women succeed in sports and embrace fitness that makes them proud. That was the mission of Jagra. No matter what your size, shape, or age, every woman and girl deserves the benefits of exercise and fitness. I had the best time talking with Lisa, Hinda, and Polly. By the way, they were inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for creating the jog bra. And you can see it on display at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History starting in 2023. Well deserved. So now that we know how the sports bra was invented, here's the big question for us today. How do we find one that fits? So joining us now is Self Magazine's editor in chief, Lita Shy, to share tips on keeping the girls supported. Hi. Hi, Chanel. I just think this is so fantastic. I have to be honest, I was born in 78. You know, the sports bra in my mind has always been. So to right. see these women who actually, you know, started it. Exactly. It's they're, pretty they're cool. They're the reason why we were able to work out with confidence. Exactly. Exactly. Me. All right. So let's talk about why, first of all, it's so important uh, for women to find the right sports bra. Right. So with when it comes to finding the right fit, it's not just about how you feel, but also your confidence level. So I think a really important thing to remember is if we're wearing the right clothes and we're feeling good about what we're what we're working out in, we're gonna have a good workout. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. But also, if you have the wrong fitting bra, it can lead to things like breast pain, which is just not good for anyone, but that can you know lead to kind of some long-term issues. Yeah, and you can be fit, sore. You can be sore yeah. during your workouts. Um, fit is okay. really important. So on that note, we have three different mannequins here yes. with some different um, you know things to think about when you're purchasing a sports bra. So with this one, pretty basic, but what do we need to know? So this one, you know, when you're when you're really looking for a sports bra, it's it's important to one be able to try it out in, in the dressing room if you can. But if you're shopping online, really look for the three types of supports. So okay. Low impact, medium impact, and high impact. And this is a good example of a low impact bra. So you know, it it's got. Um, 
some straps right here. It's got um, just like, you know, it's keeping you supported, but it's, but not, it's not more like, you know, it's not, it's like, it's it's not locked like in. in. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're a little heavier chested, you need a little bit more support. I didn't realize you could buy one that looks almost like a bra. Yeah, so this is called an encapsulated bra. Um, there's different versus a, a more compression bra, or because yeah. like, we don't have one here, but you know, kind of what we would think of the uniboob mm -hmm, look. Mm -hmm. This one is, if you if you like to kind of keep your cups separate, um, it's got some styles in the back where you can you can make it into a racer back. But style is really important when you are searching for a bra because there are so many different types out there mm -hmm. that it's, um, you know, it can be hard to find the right fit for you. Okay. And I think what's important about shopping for a bra is to always put it on, try it, see how it feels, where does it fit on your rib cage? Is it hard to breathe? Is it easy to breathe? Is it too constricting? All of those things are really important. I put on and I just jump. Yeah, you and I see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I see how it goes. Exactly. All right, so last but not least, uh, full disclosure, I told her, I'm like, <laughs> do I want a corset vibe? I but know, you brought up a really good point, though. Sometimes vibes going on, right? Yes, <laughs> but sometimes they're hard to get off. So yeah. this takes that away. Exactly. So um, a lot of people, you know, after a workout, you're really sweaty. You don't actually, you know, the, the idea of just going like this is is not so great so a lot of people really like front front zippers sure. front clasps some back clasps this is a good example of that and this one is actually really great for people with larger chests it's a high impact bra it keeps everything in you can jump around you can do a lot of movement yeah and like as it goes all the way up exactly you're Full you're coverage. in there the girls right. are in there yep. really quickly how often should you replace it and, and washing with some of your sports bras you know what? I'm I, I I'm I'm not sure how much you how many you should wash it. Probably yeah. every single time you you wear it. But as far um, as the care, hand wash, probably hand wash. Yeah, put yeah. it in a garment bag. Yeah, yeah. Um, as long as you are feeling comfortable in your bra, there's no breast pain. I okay. think you can you can you can keep your bra as long as as you as you like it. Okay, Lita, thank you. Good things to keep in mind. All right, coming up, a registered dietitian breaks down what you should eat to fuel your best workout, and later, a new kind of movement platform that inspires so much more than just a good sweat. Right after this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Welcome back to Wellness Today, Women on the Move. Here to teach us a few ways we can use food as our fuel to add a boost to our workouts is registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having me. So excited. So let's dig in a little bit. First of all, let's talk about three factors that we should all consider when we're planning our meals during the day. Yeah, so three factors we want to consider are the duration, the intensity, and the time of day. Okay. So if you're going to exercise at 5 o'clock in the morning, a lot of people don't really feel very great. 
eating right away, yeah, right? Absolutely. It's like, it's hard, right? Because if you're getting up at five, yeah. you're probably gonna work out at like 5.15. So you wanna think about what did you eat the night before? If you're properly fueled from the night before, then you should be fine to sustain your workout. And then after you eat, you probably wanna wait about 20 minutes and you should just have a regular breakfast, protein, fat, carbohydrate. So okay. if we look over here, we okay. can see, right? We have a slice of toast, There's that's a carb. We so this right here would be before a workout. One or the other? You could have after the workout and you could also probably have before if okay. you cho so choose, but I would suggest waiting 30 to 60 minutes okay. just because it might not make your stomach feel really great. Okay. So you want to pay attention to that, okay. but you could have this slice of toast, peanut butter, you've got protein, you have fat, you have carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. You could also have oatmeal. It has exact, the exact same thing. You just want to think if you want to have that extra protein in the oatmeal and you're making the, pro the oatmeal with water, then you would add a peanut butter or maybe protein. So it seems like you need the carbs, protein, and a little bit of fat. Totally. You need it all. Yes. And I think in our minds, a lot of us think, okay, no fat. Right. Or no carbs. Right. You know, we constantly try to figure it out. Right. But if we had them all together, it helps to slow down that digestion and helps keep you full until the next meal. Okay. So you're not constantly looking for the next meal okay. because you're properly fueled. And then 30 to 60 minutes, would you say, before you work out? Yeah, because, you know, moving around, jumping around, yeah, a lot. it might make you not feel well. If you're somebody who you're not affected, by all okay. means, have at it, but okay. it just depends on who you are. So let's talk about staying hydrated doing, during a workout. Is just good old-fashioned water not enough, or do you need a little extra oomph? Well, it just depends, right? If I'm training for the New York City Marathon in August, right. New York City in August is very warm, right? Yeah. So I would need more than just water. But what about just the average Joe watching this morning? Or I'm, not Joe. Or, well, you can be a Joe, too. Yeah. Or Julia. So how, how hydrated are you? Are okay. you somebody who drinks alcohol at night? Mm -hmm. You might be more dehydrated. Do you did you have coffee? So you want to be paying attention to that. What so, are these things? Right. So we've got water here is fine. Yeah. These. You could also have powdered electrolyte water or just a noon tablet. Okay. And What's also, that? I don't even know what that is. A noon tablet is, again is electrolyte. So okay. it's just going to help you stay more hydrated. Okay. And if you don't want to spend money or have these things in your house, good old fashioned table salt will do the same trick. Really? Yes. Will, what, in your water? Yeah, in your water. Just a little bit? Just a little bit, just a pinch. It's going to help you with hydration. It's going to help your muscles. So you don't have to go through this exercise of spending extra cash yeah. on, on, a, on electrolyte water. Learn something every day. Yeah. All right, let's talk about after your workout. I asked her, full disclosure, if it's true after you work out, if you eat a meal, like your body's like burning it. <laughs> and she said, no, that's not true. <laughs> so talk about what we should eat after a workout. Yeah, so like, okay, here's the thing. When you exercise, your muscles are depleted of glycogen, which is their energy store. So you want to make sure that you definitely have eaten something so that you're not using all the, the muscles that you've been building. So that makes sense. But how are ways for you to replenish and recover? So we have blueberries here. That's like the best recovery. Um, and also- Why is that? It's just because the um, antioxidants help with the muscles. Okay. So muscle, you know, runners do sure. this, cyclists. And then you want to add some cheese to it because there's protein there. So it's going to help spare your muscles. And then also a really good recovery drink, the best recovery drink is chocolate milk. It has electrolytes. It has calcium. It has magnesium. It has phosphorus. So again, it helps with your hydration. It helps keep your muscles boosted. And also it's going to help you feel full. You know what? It's so funny because we've been trained and it's not right, but to think chocolate milk or cheese, like some of these things are bad, but it just goes to show. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't have to omit any food and yeah. we don't need to vilify these yeah. foods. If yeah. they work for you, you should definitely have them. And it also makes things like different and exciting. So think about if you had worked out maybe in the middle of the day and it's, you know, not quite ready for lunch, you could have a chocolate milk as a snack and that's yeah. going to feel good. And you're not going to feel so hungry and yeah. peckish maybe later on. Tonight. What's your thought on counting calories or calories in versus calories out? Not all calories are created equal. Sure. If you want to think about 96 calories of beer versus 96 calories of chicken are going to be digested entirely different way. Okay. So calories in, calories out is very like old, but nutrition is a new science. We yeah. only started studying it maybe like 80 years ago. Yeah. So we're still always learning. And that was something that we thought was true, you know, in the mid 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. 70s. But now we know that's not entirely the story. Mm -hmm. So I don't think counting calories is the way, but really making sure that you have protein, fat and carb at every meal is going to help you stay full. And then you don't have to be so hyper focused on the calorie. But what does the makeup of the plate look like? Mm -hmm. Do you have fiber? Do you have fat? Are you enjoying your food? Mm -hmm. Those are things 
things that are going to help you in the long run, not overeat or binge later on in the day. It almost too sounds like it looked this whole show is about health and wellness. Just being mindful yeah. of what you're putting in, even yeah. with these things, like even before you work out, like all of these things, it's well thought out, but you see all of the groups here. Totally. And also yeah. like what's right for you is not right for me. Yeah. There's so many factors. Vanessa Rosetto, thank you thank so you. much. All right, when we come back, actor Allison Stoner's new fitness platform that will inspire all of us to get moving right here on Wellness Today. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're gonna be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Welcome back to Women on the Move. You may recognize Allison Stoner from her roles in Step Up and Cheaper by the Dozen. Now her latest project with her sister Corey O'Neill is disrupting the wellness space with movement classes to help improve not only physical health, but emotional and mental well-being too. I got a chance to sit down with them to learn more about Movement Genius and an inclusive and empowering platform. Take a look. And starting with your feet, go ahead and tighten the muscles in your feet by curling your toes downward. And now exhale and suddenly release all the tension completely. So we are currently at the annual Youth Wellness Summit with the Society for the Prevention of Teen Suicide. And Movement Genius is teaching students some different stress relief techniques that they can use to support their mental health. We first built Movement Genius thinking this would be for young people but really this is for everyone with a body. Historically, wellness has been built by and for a very narrow set of bodies. So right off the bat, we wanted to make sure that we're collaborating with practitioners and experts who embody all lived experiences, all kinds of body types, preferences, needs, so that you can see wellness for everyone. Just like your mind, your body is remembering all of your experiences every day. The high moments, the low moments. It's interesting though, because when I think about mental health, I don't know if I connect it with the body, you think neck up. Where is stress, anxiety, and even trauma stored? In the body, in the muscles, in your cells, in these learned behaviors and responses to different situations. So mindful movement allows you to reconnect your mind and body, learn how your body needs to relax and release tension. This isn't a new practice per se, but it's never been presented in an entertaining format. If you're releasing a bunch of stress hormones and adrenaline, shaking it out actually helps you release that adrenaline and then you can come down to a state of calmness. So you've heard of fight, flight, or freeze? Absolutely. Or stress and threat response. Now, what happens after that threat is done? What do you normally do? I don't really run. Maybe I freeze? I don't know. So once we freeze, have you ever seen an animal in a moment of threat? Do you recognize what they do after that threat has no, passed? No, I've never really thought about it. After a moment of threat, we'll kind of just shake it off and then keep moving forward and shake out shake some of the stress. So it's not just fun, it actually, there's science it behind it. There is science behind it. We're just reminding you of the intelligence that your body has to cope with stress and feel better. You'll see me doing this tomorrow before yes. the show and you're like, what is she doing? Exactly. 
Movement Genius is committed to making their wellness classes accessible to everybody. Most memberships cost no more than $10 a month. Thank you for joining me to celebrate how women have transformed their lives through exercise. We've seen how breaking a sweat is essential for our mental, physical, and emotional well-being at all stages of our lives. I am feeling ready, and I hope you are too, to find the fitness routine that makes you feel your best every single day. I'm Chanel Jones, and we'll see you next time on Wellness Today. Just go. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And then we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. That's you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Bad. Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, executive chef Aisha Nurjaya is here to help me test my culinary prowess and step it up a notch. We're going to make a Mediterranean-inspired mezzi feast, including my favorite chicken shawarma with a tangy white sauce and homemade hummus, plus a few special favorites from her show-stopping restaurants, Shuka and Shuket. I'm a little nervous, a little intimidated, but mostly just so excited to try. So let's get started. Chef Aisha, you know oh, I am your super fan. And I appreciate that. And now you have heard that I don't know how to cook anything, right? I've heard that, but I want to see it for myself. Let's get started. Shook okay, perfect. Shawarma. Well, let's cheers first. Oh. I have a drink here. Oh, where's my Oh, what is this This fancy is a gazo. So this is like basically a fruit juice that's topped with a little bit of seltzer. Mm. And some herbs. That is delicious. So there's some blood orange in here, some cara cara, a touch of grapefruit and seltzer. If we were feeling like getting a little litty, we'd have put a little tequila. I could see a little something, a little something <laughs> extra in there, but I've got it. I've, we've got knives. I have to stay sober. We're for gonna this. stay focused right now. Okay. Okay. So let me look at the recipe. I'm sure. Because I'm a new cook, I get obsessed about the All recipe. Right. But I have a plan. Our plan for today is start the chicken shawarma, make and mix the white sauce, prepare the hummus, create a pantry salad, prepare the toppings for the chicken shawarma, and serve and eat. We're gonna start with the marinade first. Okay. Okay? So right to your left, you have some mm -hmm. lemon juice. Yes. We're gonna put that right in here. Okay. And then we're gonna use some garlic paste. Now okay. this garlic paste, I'm gonna hand yeah. this to you. Now this is one, I'm already scared. Garlic paste. Well, Don't first of all, I gotta open it. Okay. But I'm gonna oh, show you is. something. We're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the spoon and kind of coat it with this. Oh, you're like basically greasing your- Exactly. Wow, that is so smart. Right, so if Cooking <laughs> show over, this is incredible. <laughs> this is revolutionary. Would be great if you added a little bit of that olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. How all, much? All of it. It's like baking, where they tell you oh. like dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. Yes, you okay. want to kind of put the, either the, all the dry in first mm -hmm. or the wet. I How like much to do whisking? the whisking? No, that's fine, as long as it's combined. But right now, we're going to add a little bit of our spice blend. You have one tablespoon of black pepper. Mm -hmm. This is cinnamon. Four. Okay. So right this now is, that was paprika. This is cumin. Cumin. And this okay. is my favorite. Okay. It's the color of my shirt. Oh, it is. What is this? This is turmeric. I was gonna guess that. Oh, I love so it. So this is really gonna give that earthy flavor to the shawarma mm -hmm. and also that beautiful color. So we're gonna whisk that together. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to recognize Look how beautiful this marinade. This is. I know. All right, perfect. All right, so this looks beautiful. Okay. And now we're gonna do the onion. So okay, wait, one. I know how to do this. Okay. What so you wanna do is, at this point, you can cut the little piece off at the end. Here. Okay, okay. Okay. This is off. Yes. And then you kind of want to follow the curvature of the onion with your knife. So we're not going to slice straight down. We're going to slice like this, a little bit on an angle, if you will. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yep. Perfect. 
Okay. There you go. Okay. But now that's done. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. So we're gonna put that in there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna mix this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind grabbing the chicken? So right now we're gonna use chicken thighs, okay. and I love chicken thighs because I find them to be super forgiving. Yes. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna dump the chicken oh, right into our thing. You're a wild woman. Because we don't need all of this paper. Okay. That Christmas. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this first so I can show you. You notice my, my hand is like this, mm -hmm. like okay. doing a C, and then you're going up and down, slicing right through. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Good, is it like? Okay. Beautiful. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's hard to do that knuckle thing. I know yeah. you're supposed to. You have to practice it. Yours looks like it's easy to cut, and then when I do it, I'm like sawing like I'm Paul Bunyan in the forest. <laughs> Maybe to, I just need to be more confident. Yes, you have Ooh. to be easy on yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have one more there. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. Done. Now, your best, we have beautiful kitchen tools here, mm -hmm. but your best kitchen tool are going to be your hands. Oh. So you're going to get right in there. Ooh, and I like it with the gloves, because then I just don't feel all gross. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello. So you want to make sure that each crevice of those chicken thighs, yeah. remember the parts that we saw that were open, like where the bone was? Yes. That all that marinade gets in okay, there. Okay, so I really want to get in there. Exactly. Okay. These thighs have the life. The you're, full you're massage kidding. here. Look at this. They're living the their best treatment. life. treatment. It yeah. looks beautiful. So we're gonna have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm gonna cover and it and have, put it in. Yes, and I have one in there if you don't mind grabbing it that oh, has yeah. been marinated already. Okay. I'll make some room for you. Perfect. 48 hours later, 48 through hours the magic later. of television. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So let's uncover this. So this is made. Now, what if you really didn't have 48 hours or you're a bad planner? Like, I mean, what's you the could bare do, minimum? You could do it for four hours. You could. Really? But I can't guarantee you that that really deep flavor. Got it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. So if you smell this, you can smell all that hard work that you mm. did with the garlic. Delicious. So yes. I'm going to hand you this sheet tray. So the key here is what we want to do is make sure that we put this on the sheet tray, but we give it enough space that the heat is hitting it so we're not overcrowding it. Okay. Why don't so, I just help you out by kind of like doing a little bit of the dump method oh, here. Is that all right? Yep. Oh, and okay. then you are going to use and your tongs spread to okay. spread them out, yeah, right? right. Cool. But like does but each guy like... have to live in his own little world? No, nah, they just have to have a little space around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, I think Perfect. so. Okay. So we'll walk this over to the oven. Now does the rack position matter in this? As long as it's in the, it's, as long as it's, they're not on the same shelf, you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Okay. So I'll go here. Okay. okay so we're going to put that in there. Chicken shawarma is in the oven, but it's not a good shawarma unless you have this beautiful white sauce. You have to have the white sauce. So what is it? So have you ever eaten like out of a cart, a halal cart? Yeah. And you get like chicken over rice mm -hmm. and the guy says white sauce, hot sauce, and you like double white sauce? Yes. This is really where this recipe was born. Okay. It is now like the ranch of the kitchen. <laughs> Ah. Every, they put it on shawarma, family meal. I've seen it go on pasta. I mean, they take it to a place. French fries? I mean, that's the best. Yes. That's the best application, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take some of the technique that we learned in the first mm -hmm. about the wet and the dry. Yes. And we're going to start this. So to your, your left, <laughs> okay. you have um, some creme fraiche. This is mayo. I recognize okay. that. Okay, we have mayo. A couple mayonnaise. And then in your next container, we're going to have the yogurt. I like to use Greek yogurt because I like the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives the sauce like a nice body. Okay. So okay. you have lemon juice there? Yeah. To your lemon left. Lemon juice. To your lemon okay. juice. Okay. Ooh. And then the next thing you're going to do is going to grate that garlic clove on the microplane. Oh, now this is have scary. Have you done that before? I have, and I have to say these things are scary. The reason why you feel uncomfortable is probably because you don't want to nick your finger. Because I have nicked my finger. So what you would do is put on a glove. Okay, so, so I'm going to put that. The whole thing. Three quarters of it. It's an extra large clove we, I chose just so that you wouldn't feel. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, it's so, so scary. Close. Like, am I, am I doing like this? You are. Back Can I just forth? show you something, though? Yeah. It, you have to be in a place where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this rested on here, yeah. this oh. at a point, and then if you do this, oh, you have a lot better. of space between you and the end. So you could kind of oh, that's a better just do way it to like do three it. or yeah. four times. I gotta tell you, this gives me a little anxiety. So tap it three or four times. Oh. And let's turn it around. Should be all good. And that was perfect. One teaspoon sherry vinegar. Okay. okay. Now if you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar will do. One time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, Savannah, did you and your girlfriends drink my sherry wine, cooking wine? And I was like, no. But then I thought to myself, huh, would that work? <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Okay. And we're going to add the dry spices now. Oh. Oh, there they are. Okay, see, I missed it. I'd have been like, and we're done. White sauce over. Almost, no, almost. Okay. So we have black pepper, a mm -hmm. half a teaspoon. Okay. And next is our garlic powder. And here we have onion powder. Mm-hmm. One teaspoon onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder are those two 
spices in, in your pantry mm -hmm. that will always get you out of trouble. Okay. If you ever need like a quick a marinade and you yeah. don't know, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and okay. olive oil, do the trick. Oh it's like they cover all the sins. Huh? All the sins. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. And Did then I we get have our all? salt. No salt. How much salt? One, one, one half, half teaspoon. teaspoon salt. Okay. How would you tell if this is good or not? I learned something. And what is you it? You must taste it. And here, <gasps> I present you with your magic tasting spoon box. I just love this. May I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. And I'm going to taste, taste it, it too. And what we're tasting for is that all of these key players mm. are in harmony together. I mean, sprinkle my ashes with this. It you is did a great so job. good. Do you think now it's you good? Can, it's delicious. I think it's perfect. And now you can understand <clears throat> why my kitchen uses it on everything. I wouldn't change one thing. So let's put this in the bowl that we're going to serve it in because oh, it's okay. one less step that we have to do later. Oh, smart. Okay. Maybe I'll get you another spoon. Oh, you got it? I'll do it like this. Okay. And the key when you do it like this is mm -hmm. just keep pouring it right in the middle. Oh, okay. It'll make a little beautiful mound. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, it's perfect. It looks delicious. I get obsessive about clean plate club here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator. Has anyone ever licked the bowl? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is also good with crudite. Oh, so if I was cooking, yes. I would leave this dirty bowl right here. Yeah. It's not chicken. We're okay. Yes. We'll have a little snack. So let's get this in the refrigerator. We cover and refrigerate. Perfect. Aisha, ask and you as shall prom receive. As promised, we have, we have a little bit of uh, celery sticks okay, here. Let's just try and this, it out. We're just gonna have a little snack. I mean, we deserve it after all this. Oh cooking. my gosh, we do. Can I double dip on my side? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so good. Have I mentioned how good it is? Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For our next trick, homemade hummus. Two words I never thought I'd utter. Why should I make it when I can go to the store? You could always customize it to how you want it. If you love garlic, if you like smoked paprika, if you want to keep it super plain. So we're going to show you a plain hummus. Okay. And then we're going to doctor it up mm -hmm. as you like. I heard through the grapevine that the machine we're going to use is something that you're not a big fan of. Don't say the food processor. I'm going to have to. It's like you're a home alone moment with the big furnace in the basement. I have food processor okay. fear. We're yes. going to show you exactly that, that, that how, it, how unintimidating it is. Okay. okay. So let's grab the food processor. First of all, it weighs 600 pounds. It does. First of all, this machine is built for safety. So we're going to open the blade mm -hmm. here. Okay. And then we have all of these uh, accoutrements, if you will. Now, see, so I'm this always going to get cut. Right. You always want to kind of assertively take it out and hold it by its edges, because this is very, very sharp. Yeah. This is the grater. This is what you would want to do if you were trying to make coleslaw. And this is the blade. So this slices things in discs. Okay. So if you had zucchini, cabbage would be good in here, too. What about too. potatoes? I hate slicing potatoes. Potatoes would be perfect. Okay. okay, so that's this. And then it comes with this nice microphone. You can sing karaoke <laughs> while you're making it. But that's really for the attachments, and we're not going to use that right now, okay? And this is the blade. How do we choose this one? Because this is the one that's going to puree. Oh. So here we have right, chickpeas. Yes. So we're going to throw them in Stop here. Them in. One, two. Okay. Four cups cooked chickpeas. One half cup tahini paste. So you're going to take oh, that, that your small, with your small little uh, spatula because mm -hmm. you want to get every 
uh, oh, sing a little maybe morsel is, of that out. Maybe it is a little pasty. It could work with it's, this. It's viscous. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, so that. your tahini is in. Mm -hmm. And then we have our lemon juice. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Right. Okay, Pro olive tip. oil. Half cup olive oil. Okay, you can put that in there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then you have salt. Kosher salt. Now, this is one of those yes. how much you guys, what you, you chefs, you never want to say. Well, this is a good technique for you to learn. So that's nice, but this is what you really are going to look for. You want to make but it how rain. I know that. Because listen, you're going to have to learn how to cook by taste and touch. Okay. Okay. So I know that when I grab that, that that's mm -hmm. 28 grams. Okay. Because I've been cooking for a long time. Wow. So if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of salt, yes. can, I, can you open your hand? Mm -hmm. So you know that's what that, a lot, that, right? But you know what that feels like. Yeah. So half of that is what you would have used in that recipe, but I already put it in for you. Okay. So just so kidding. this way you know. This way you know what it feels like. Okay. All right. I'm so gonna, put that I on your board. To, oh, put it on my board. It's okay. okay. And then we got to do a little bit over the left shoulder because you know we can't oh, have anything. Is that like a good luck thing? We walk out of here. Today. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let me just. Oh boy. Oh boy. Stand clear. So what are we do gonna I do? Do I need to cover this? Is no, it gonna no, come exploding out? Hit this button. It's a pulse. That says off. Okay. Good. Do it again. Where should I put this? Yeah, put your hand up there. Keep going. My pulse, when I hop my nose, just on it. So you can on it, but okay. what I like to do is kind of pulse it so it, that it gets all the ingredients together. So oh. now you can put the on button. Okay. And just let it rip for a little while. All right. Like have a sip of your gazos. This is fun. Sure beats chopping all this stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And we're gonna stop this. And this is really quintessential when you're using this machine because the blade is on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And it's only going in one direction. What we like to do when we use this is take the top off mm -hmm. and we like to go around, which I'm gonna do this time mm -hmm. and you'll do the next, and take what's the ingredients mm -hmm. that are on the bottom and kind of oh. flip them on the top. Because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that when we're making this hummus that everything has its same consistency, I see. okay? I have so, to go pulse again. No, you're gonna put it on. Oh. And at this point, we're gonna stream in some of that water. All at once or? or just a little bit at a okay. time. This is. One cup of water. Mm -hmm. I actually think that we might use three quarters of a cup. Now this part is not a definite in a recipe. Mm -hmm. It depends how much you dried your chickpeas mm -hmm. and how much liquid is in there. Okay. So if you dump the whole quarter, the whole cup of water in there, it could be too liquidy. Okay. We want something that's going to hold its peak. Look good. Yeah. You see that? It's getting smoother, yeah. which I like. It. And now you can see if you step on my side, you see how this is really moving slowly. Yeah. That's why you have to stop. All right. So time to stop. And right. And you're going to have it. an intervention. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Here you are. Okay, so now I'm just like kind of going around the sides. Let's yes. get everybody in there. Oh, okay, so okay. let's taste it. That's on point. Honey, that is delicious. Okay. Hummus. Perfect. So we're going to unclick it, mm -hmm. lift that up. My... Now, What's... how long can I keep this in my refrigerator? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. And, and the I'm same thing, to... you're going to spoon it directly in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks delish. And at Shuka and Shuket, we do the swoosh. And in the swoosh, we usually fill it with not, lots of nice things. So I do the spice first? Yep, let's do the All spice over first. just in my little... Whatever you like. Well, I think it looks kind of fancy when it's like... Is that good or is it that is too beautiful. heavy? beautiful. No, 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 keep going. Okay. Mm. And you're going to fill that pool and all the little divots here. Oh, I love it. This looks like professional. I mean, you're killing it. Come on. I'm coming over when you're oh, making this. seriously. How beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, that? that is gorge. All right. So we have some pita chips here. We could have had some crudite. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is another one of those things. Why don't you take your little uh, celery stick? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You do a little dip. Exactly. And we'll make you like the little chef tasting. Oh, yes. Oh, that. I love that. And then we'll that much, bit. huh? Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah, why not? Look at this. If we're going to do I it. I mean, come to mama. OK, oh, there we go. What do you think? I mean, it's so good. Awesome. So good. All right. Oh, my gosh. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. 
people will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. If there is one thing I love at Shuka, Aisha, it's your salads. I love salad because it's it really represents the bounty of what is being grown. Fancy. We're kind of doing a pantry salad, if you will. Okay. So I found these things in the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. And we have some romaine mm -hmm. that I've just roughly chopped up here. Great. And what I'm going to do is show you how to cut uh, some of these tomatoes. Oh yeah. Okay. Not, not a, that's not a strong seed. So of mine. these are baby cherry tomatoes. Okay. So we're going to actually use a serrated knife for this. this nice. You're going to pinch the tomato a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're going to make it taut. So that when you go right through the serrated knife and come back around, that it splits in half. Okay, wow. Okay. So I'm so you're gonna pinch it. You feel it's tight. I do. Right. Put your knife and oh. go right through. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna add it to here. Mm -hmm. And then here we have our uh, Persian cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I love to leave the skin on because they're mm -hmm. so small. Oh, interesting. I, I always take the skin really? off. Really? Yeah, but that's just, I don't know. Well, they're super healthy. Yes. Um, the, the, the cucumber itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it adds some color and texture. Yeah. So because that's pretty small, I'm going to cut it, cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. Again, I cut it in half. Those little. Perfect. And then things. I would just cut them into half, ounce, half mm -hmm. inch. Little pieces. Now, now would that, you do that's, it like that, or is that I a bad think idea? that's a little aggressive, because again, we want to be safe and we want to make it to the dinner table. <laughs> now I see so I'm just... doing a job. <laughs> so you want them cut side down, because now they're not going to roll away from you, oh, right, okay. right? And we're going to add these straight away to here. Okay, we're going to add some pine nuts. Okay. Do you like pine nuts? I do. I love pine nuts. I like pine nuts because they actually have really good. Uh, fat content mm -hmm. and they add like this luxurious feel when you bite into them. Okay. And then last but not least would be our feta. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in the bowl here. Yes. And now let's talk dressing. Okay. My favorite go-to dressing is lemon juice, olive oil, honey, and salt. Okay. Can I ask your tossing technique? Sure. This is what I would do. I go from the bottom up. It's okay. the same thing like when you were marinating the chicken, mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Okay. Let me and try I it. personally mm -hmm. don't like a lot of dressing. Yeah. So I would just like do a once around. That's what I just kind of figure people can add more if they so right. desire. How's that? Perfect, okay. perfect. Okay. That's good. And then just. And then same thing, bottom mm -hmm. up. Yum. Maybe I'll put a little more feta because yeah. those nice little chunks mm -hmm. are now nestled Yum. at okay. the bottom. This looks delicious. Yes. Oh. So if you just want to put that to the okay. side, we have a few finishing touches before we eat. Okay. I thought we were done. What's this guy coming here for? Since you did such an amazing job and we've conquered your fears, we're going to bring him out again so that you could show him who's boss. The food processor? You know it. You and know this it. guy? Yes. Oh. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to break this down. Okay. Okay. So this is red cabbage. Yeah. So we're going to cut a little bit of the bottom off like that. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then you just want to remove the outer leaves. Yes. See what I mean? You got it, you got it. There right. you go. I guess I just got to be a They'll little be, more aggressive. You could use a little force. Yeah. We're going to cut this in half. You're going to take the knife. You're going to put it in as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Right? In the beginning. Got it? Okay. Ah, yeah. Good, good. See, now I'm like okay. stuck. Hold and on. This guy's sticking right. out. Okay. So yeah. keep your hand flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So put yeah. your hand flat. Mm -hmm. And now push all the way down. Whoa. It might take three or four saws, but just keep your hand flat. <laughs> go ahead. You almost got it. Where's the chainsaw? <laughs> Can I just okay, saw on, it on. on the other side? Yeah, let me help you for a second. Because what happened is that your knife is now in here, not the blade. Oh. So we're going to take that out, okay. okay? And then when you get to this point, you're going to take your knife, yeah. you're going to go straight down on this side, yeah. flip it, and straight down yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's what I would want to do. Okay. I'd want to be like, shoot, shoot, like this. You know the other thing that's... Oh, ouch. Darn it. What happened? I've never gotten through a segment without... No, it was just a little tap. Okay. Just a little so wait, hold tap. on. Hold, but let's do it together so you don't have a tapping problem again. Oh, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Put it down. Starting to see. We're what gonna this... go down here, okay? And then you gotta be assertive and go down here. Okay. Now right. what are we doing? Just cut it in half again so that I know that okay. you can do it. God. Okay, good. See, so you did it. Who'd think this would be the hardest part? Okay. So let's get the machine. You don't need all of that because we're gonna okay. all right. buzz it one, two, three. Okay. 
Okay, you want to get the Where's bottom? my friend? Okay, here we go. Mm. There's your friend. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Now this part is a little more complicated than the other one. Oh, now so I'm going to show you plates. how to use these guys. All right. Okay. One is that you should always know that they're super sharp. Okay. So you only want to touch the edges. Okay. This part you want to hold down. Mm -hmm. You see how that little piece goes down? Yes. And you are going to turn it just like this was on an angle and then slide it in. So on an angle and slide Can it I in. Can I try it? Of course. I don't Easier, know. No? Okay. There. Okay. okay. All right. That's it. Boy, I never knew that. Okay. So okay. it's locked in here, right? Yes. You heard it snap. Oh. We're going to put that in here. I want to put it the other. Okay, I just spun it because you need the bottom to like, that's probably, you're gonna turn this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, already? Okay. Yep. Okay, so now it's spinning. So now you're gonna take the cabbage. My heart is racing. And you're gonna put pieces of it in. Okay, and then you're gonna put that in there. There you go, oh! look at this. There you are. This is fun. Get in there. There you go. Get in there. Yeah, good. So we're gonna shut the machine now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, and we're gonna wait for the blade to completely stop spinning, yeah. right? And we're gonna open this, mm -hmm. and you see that in the inside? Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks incredible. Right? Okay, okay, now I get it. I so get it. We're the gonna food take, processor. if you would, please, mm -hmm. take this out. Mm -hmm. Is that okay. okay? What's this for, anyway? For, this... for the shawarma. Oh. We need a fresh crunch okay. on top, okay? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have that in here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take the top out. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, let's go. All right. So this is gonna give you more of like a slice of okay. cabbage. Oh. I like this way better, personally, because mm -hmm. I like a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this bowl, it's kind of like confetti. I like that, actually. Perfect. We'll do one more little piece, mm -hmm. and then I think we'll be ready what to go. What did we do in the olden days before food processors? Oh, actually, you have some tongs there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, just put a little Yeah, just put a little bit of yours on that half. Mm -hmm. Come over to my way, the minced ca bit. cabbage way. You Look at, isn't that friendly? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yum. We have one more thing. The star of the show, the chicken shawarma. Oh my gosh! Hello. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Oh, Look at this. Man. Smells delicious. Come to mama. Take that okay. one. And I'll take yeah. this one. No, we never yeah. looked at it. Should I have been checking it? How do I know it's done? It's pretty foolproof the recipe when it comes to cooking. If you want, if you touch this piece right here. Mm -hmm. See how it gives you like almost zero uh, resistance? Mm -hmm. That means that it's cooked. Mm -hmm. And same way you've been doing it. Just gonna load just it up. right in the middle, yeah. Mm. Wow, that looks good. All right, perfect. So let's get this, mm -hmm. and can you grab the salad? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get to the table. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I can't believe we did this. I mean, I can believe you did this. You I can't know, believe I did You this. nailed it. You have to stop telling people that you know how to cook. Look at this spread. <laughs> how do you eat your chicken shawarma? How do you prepare okay, it? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you. I want to see. So I can't help but make a sandwich because mm -hmm. how could I not? So I'm going to give you my okay, half, yes. okay? And then what I like to do is kind of mix some of these condiments. So oh. here we have harissa and zug. Mm. And here's the white sauce we made. Okay. So of course we have to put some white sauce on come here. Come to me for those of white sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out. What's there. zug? I didn't know what that That's, is. That is, here you go. And then you wanna yeah. spread okay. some of that in there. Mm -hmm. This is um, a, a cilantro serrano chilies and cardamom. Mm. I wanna get some of 
some of these onions some and stuff in there, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I love to eat with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some. Are you okay with mint and cilantro? Do I kind just of, shove it in just there? Just shove it in there. Okay. And then, of course, we have to bring over our cabbage. Okay. Let me turn this around okay. so you could have your half. I'll just do my. And I'll have mine. Yeah. We'll just kind of sprinkle it's it. The rip in and there. dip. You know. I mean, it's beautiful. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna take this. Come. Okay. Do you like spice? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little baby drizzle. How about okay. that? There. Yum. And then we'll have to do just a little, just a little I on your first bite. Ask, you know what so I mean? Thank you. Yes, I want a little more. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Thank you so much. To an so amazing much. job. Thank yes, you. I love it. All right, let's, let's see. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going in for more. Mm. You ever put hummus in it? Of course. Mm. And that's the beauty of the sandwich. Like as you're eating, yeah. you kind of just like put a little bit more of something else on top. I know. Do you, don't mind me if I just lick my fingers here. It's supposed mm. to be messy. Drag swirl. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm. For me, this is kind of fancy and fun food, but this is a classic family meal. Absolutely. The reason why I love like the Middle Eastern Mediterranean style of eating is because it's all of these little small plates, and you could really rip and dip and match, and no two flavors on this table don't go well together. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. Even my kids. Even the kids. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you so much. Mom said don't talk with your mouth full. But sometimes you can't help it. Mm -mm. I truly am. Thank you for showing me this. My pleasure. It was an honor to be cooking with you, and I'll do it anytime. You mastered all of the <laughs> food processor, your knife skills. I think you're going to nail it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. Are you ready for a getaway? As the number of COVID cases drop and restrictions lift, many of you who held off on taking that vacation during the last two years can finally look forward to traveling again. A recent survey finds more than half of Americans are planning a trip this spring and with soaring demand, Come surging prices too. Expedia says airfares are up a whopping 50% compared to last year. And average hotel rates are nearly 20% higher than they were before the pandemic. So where do travelers plan on going? Three and four say they're heading to a destination in the U.S. For the next 25 minutes, we have your getaway guidebook. From travel hacks to finding deals. And what about those home shares? They're hugely popular. But before you book, what to know and do to ensure you have a a safe and fun experience. But first, with the changing masking mandates and the emergence of yet another COVID variant, what to consider as you make your travel plans. This year, it's a new normal for spring break travel. Nearly 2 million people are passing through TSA checkpoints every day with crowded airports and packed flights back to their pre-pandemic look. But now, everyone will still be wearing a mask. In an airport, you never know where people are coming from. Uh, they may be from areas with higher case rates. It's really historically been an area where infectious diseases that pass through the air can be an issue. TSA extending its mask mandate on planes and public transportation through East weekend. Despite the low COVID infection rates here in the U.S., disease experts say airports and other transport hubs still carry risks. I encourage travelers to really uh, think about their their personal risk factors, their personal risk tolerance they will be visiting or coming home to, and then taking up the appropriate levels of precautions to protect everyone. Record gas prices, another hurdle facing spring travelers. Many road trippers now taking another look at their budget before heading out. As much as I would love to go in the truck. Cassandra and her family plan to drive their truck from Wisconsin to Florida this month, but now they're reconsidering which car they'll bring. If it's like, is it really worth it though? Because you, that's an additional, from what we're looking at so far, three, $400, that's a lot of money. Luckily for flyers, the rise in fuel prices won't affect your ticket price for at least another few weeks. In general, we see a lag of a few weeks to a few months generally when fuel prices go up before flight prices go up. 
That's because airlines buy fuel in advance so they can afford to keep prices relatively low. Still, domestic airfares are up 21 percent compared to last year. The average flight, $290 round trip. So what's the best way to score a last minute spring break deal? Consider off peak travel dates. Be aware, hot spots like Miami and Las Vegas will cost more. Big cities are not quite back to where they were pre-pandemic. So if you want to do a city break in New York City, in San Francisco, in Chicago, you're going to find better hotel prices and you're going to find fantastic flight prices as well. And Dr. Henry Wu joins us from Atlanta right now. Hey, Dr. Wu, thank you so much for being with us. Let's talk about spring break. It's already underway right now. Summer right around the corner. And a lot of us are dying to get away, planning those, those trips. How safe is it right now for people to travel at this point in the pandemic? That's a great question. I think at this point, we've learned so much about COVID-19 and the pandemic, how it spreads, and we have so many ways to protect ourselves with our vaccines and, and all the other uh, tools that we've learned in the last two years. I think it's a great time to uh, think about uh, travel and, and really assess you know, what uh, the risks uh, you're willing to tolerate, but also uh, look forward to really enjoying traveling again. Dr. Wu, what are some of the key things you should look for when you are picking a destination? Should you be monitoring the infection rates there, for example, or what the testing requirements are? Certainly. Uh, of course, uh, if you are somebody who, are, who is at higher risk of more severe illness, or especially if for whatever reason you're not vaccinated, or maybe you might respond poorly to vaccine, you should be a little careful still of where you're going. Some parts of the world are having uh, uh, rising COVID cases. Certainly that can occur in the U.S. So it's good to keep an eye on that. I would also consider uh, when you're going overseas, uh, is there going to be uh, treatment available if you might have more severe illness? So these are all things I would consider as, as people plan. And, and certainly if you do you have some risk factors that would be a little more careful. Before I let you go, what about mask mandates? A lot of areas have lifted them. So how do you decide when you should be masking, whether you should carry a mask with you? Um, and are there certain scenarios where masking is a good idea still? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think it's, you know, it's, it, it's great that a lot of these requirements and rules are relaxing because I think it's important that we increasingly uh, take our own responsibility. Uh, we've learned so much of how to protect mm -hmm. ourselves. So much like I think about when I'm gonna wear a jacket at night, I think about you know when is the right situation for me mm. to put on a mask. If I'm in an indoor crowded area, particularly with a lot of people uh, from different households, people I don't know, uh, then I still wear my mask. Certainly when I'm outside and, and, and doing something uh, where there's good ventilation or, or just with people I know, I think we can certainly uh, relax things. I, if I'm seeing mm -hmm. somebody who's at high risk of, of infection, then I'm going to be extra careful. So. I do think it's a good habit. It's certainly quite easy to do. Uh, there are situations where I think masking is, you know, uh, is not a big deal. If I'm going shopping in a store or, or watching a movie in a theater, then, then putting on that mask uh, uh, doesn't take away from that experience. All right, Dr. Wu, thank you so much for the great practical advice. We appreciate you. And coming up, how to snag the best deal for your airfare or where you're staying. Plus, what about staying in a home away from home? Those short-term home rentals are really popular now. What you want to do when you get to that home to ensure everyone has a fun and safe stay. Much more when Consumer Confidential returns. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Who will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time? You were still in Kiev. Could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Consumer Confidential's Getaway Guidebook. So after all that time waiting, you finally decided to take a vacation. As we mentioned earlier, travel is expected to reach or exceed pre-pandemic levels. The Point Sky founder and CEO Brian Kelly is here now with how to score the best deals and make the most of our long-awaited R&R. Good to see you, Brian. Thanks so much for talking with us. So first, lots of people packing their bags right now to travel. So where are the top destinations, the, the hot spots? Yeah, the hotspots are still domestic because the U.S. still has that rule that you need to test uh, to get back into the country. And for so many travelers, that's just too risky to get stuck abroad or having to even find those tests. So we're seeing huge interest in Florida. Uh, I actually was looking to go to Fort Lauderdale this weekend and I saw hotel rates in the $2,000 and up range. Absolutely Ooh. crazy. Uh, so domestic and close to home, you know, Puerto Rico, Aruba's a top spot. And for those who want culture, but don't want to travel too far, we're seeing really great airfares to Colombia as well, mm. uh, top destinations. Very good. And on that note, so you told us where the hot spots are, where people want to go. We're seeing demand for airline and hotel bookings. They're probably going to reach some new highs. So how do we find the best deals? How do we avoid that $2,000 mess you just mentioned? Absolutely. So book in advance. You know, I'm a last minute traveler in general. And as you can see with those hotel rates, you can get burned. You know, I'm seeing flights completely sell out a week or so in advance. Uh, so in general, book as far in advance as possible. I love using Google Flights. It's free and it lets you search by 30 day calendar. So in order to sniff out those cheapest deals, be flexible. Try not to leave on the Thursday and Sunday like everyone else wants to do for weekend trips. Uh, but deals mm -hmm. can be had. Uh, also, you know, stay active on social media. I follow uh, Scott's Cheap Flights and the Flight Deal. When they'll tweet out really great deals all day long. When you see one, book it right away. You've got, in general, 24 hours to cancel a ticket free of charge. So lock in the good fare. Don't sit there and think about it because these fares come and go quickly. We've even seen $220 from the West Coast to Hawaii, which is a screaming deal. Oh, wow. Deal. That is, that's flaming hot. Okay, so let me talk about this. According to the World Travel and Tourism Council, 62 million travel-related jobs disappeared in 2020. 62 million. What kind of jobs are we talking about? How many have come back? And what does that mean for travelers? Like, what are we going to see, you know, that we may not be accustomed to? Yeah, if you haven't traveled over the last two years, you might be in for a shock. You know, most mid-level and lower hotels now, you're not gonna get the full service that you used to, the daily housekeeping. Mm -hmm. A lot of hotels will make you request that. You know, gyms and fitness facilities might be, uh, you know, at minimal level. So when you're looking at, you know, should I splurge on a hotel mm -hmm. or should I do a vacation rental? First understand and see what you're actually getting at the hotel because so many of those frontline jobs you know, hotels are really just running on minimum capacity. You might not see room service. A lot of hotels have gotten rid of mini bars. So uh, I recommend to everyone, do a little bit of research, make sure you understand the perks that you're gonna get and make your reservations in advance. Uh, just showing up and trying to get into hotels or even theme parks or national parks, you know, uh, some of them require reservations. So uh, as much as I hate to say it, try to plan as far in advance as possible. Good to know what to expect. And quickly now, vaccine passports, those are on the rise and they're sort of confusing to understand. So talk about what they are exactly. And then do we need to get them? How do we get them before we travel? Yeah, so I'm going to Costa Rica this weekend and most governments will have uh, websites where you can upload your vaccine card or recent test. And what they'll do is give you a QR code so that when you enter the country, you know, you don't have to worry about having papers printed out. Some countries are sticklers about paper tests, though. So don't have things loaded in your email on your phone. You may not be able to get access to a phone. So do print out mm. all of the QR codes and the negative tests. Uh, but in general, if you're traveling abroad, just look up the country, go directly to the country site. Uh, usually you're going to have to do what's called a passenger locator form so the government knows where you are in case you do test positive. Um, but a lot of countries are re relaxing the rules. Dubai, uh, all the UK, even Costa Rica mm -hmm. now, uh, if you're vaccinated, you can travel pretty freely. So it varies by country. So make sure you do that little bit of research. Don't assume mm -hmm. every country is going to let you in with a negative test because some might not. 
Brian Kelly, the points guy, bringing so much great practical information for us. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks for having me. Safe travels. Now, a big part of your trip, where will you stay? Whether it's a quick getaway, a long-term stay, popular option now, home shares. They're booked through popular sites like Airbnb and Verbo. But before you say yes, what you need to know to ensure you have a safe and fun time. Cooped up no longer, people are planning their getaways, beaches, mountains, deserts, and everything in between. And a record number of travelers now staying in home shares rented from sites like Airbnb and Verbo. They're so popular, demand for vacation rentals is expected to increase by 14% this year. I booked a home share because everything is in there. They have kitchen, they have beach supplies that you can use. It's pretty much has everything. They're super hot. Can't wait to go. My kids love the beach. One of the biggest perks of using a home share, the ability to rent something you might not otherwise get to experience. Before the pandemic, I toured this beautiful vacation home on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts. Jeremy Gall is the CEO of Breezeway, a company that helps property managers maintain quality and safety standards for vacation rentals. What's the advantage of using a home share? Two big things. There's so much space and the property is so unique. So you get to really enjoy something that's different than when you stay in a hotel. When you first get to a home, what should you be looking for? Yeah, you're gonna walk in, you're gonna to wanna to unpack, everybody's excited, but the first thing you should do is just orientate yourself and get aware about the property. Here's a good example. Here's where the fire extinguisher is and emergency numbers and contact information. And what about those chemicals under the sink? Don't expect there's gonna be safety latches on these properties, uh, but if you're traveling with little kids, just be aware and make sure these are all taken care of. Maybe move, take the time to move them up. In a home, pay particular attention to the smoke detector outside the kitchen. Prior guests might have cooked something smoky and pulled the batteries. When renting an entire home, consider the unfamiliar features, especially at night. The number one accident in vacation homes is trip and fall hazards. This property has a nightlight, but it's always a good idea to bring one with you. I love this room. I see it has a bunk bed. A lot of home shares have bunk beds. What are the safety tips around bunk beds? Popular option, kids under six shouldn't be in the top bunk. So this is something a lot of people might not have in their own home, a huge balcony like this with this kind of view. Yeah, amazing. If you have a balcony like this, you want to look at three things, the height, the stability, and the gaps in between the balusters to make sure it's not too wide. Yeah, good idea if you have kids and also pets. Yeah, pets is a really good point. And pools can be fun, but a lot of times the pools don't have any kind of fencing around them. No, this is wide open and there's really easy access. So a couple things to keep in mind. One, if you're traveling in a group, designate one adult who's gonna be in charge of pool safety. Okay. The other thing to do is check with the manager, make sure you understand how the pool cover works so you can open and close it and keep it closed when you're not using it. And with a kitchen, you have the option to cook meals and make drinks at home. Over multiple days, that can add up to even more savings. Simple tips so you can enjoy your time in a home away from home. And both Airbnb and Verbo have stringent cleaning guidelines. You can still ask the homeowner what they're specifically doing between each guest. Some actually request you bring your own linens, so be sure to ask before you travel. When we come back, save on your travel essentials, plus what to look for when you're shopping for new luggage, and your travel hacks, tricks so you can make the most out of your suitcase space, and how to avoid overpacking. Guilty. Your getaway guidebook returns on Consumer Confidential. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. When preparing for a getaway, there are certain travel essentials we should all have on our checklist, like the right luggage and clothes for the destination. But you don't want to break the bank with inflation and surge pricing. Traveling on a budget has become more important than ever. Here to share her vacation saving strategy is shopping expert Trey Bodge. Trey, it's so good to see you in person. Yes, I love coming. it. Thank you for having me. We were just joking because for a lot of us, we haven't dusted off any of our travel stuff in a mm -hmm. couple of years. You open things up, you're like, does this luggage zipper even work? So let's start there. That's yeah. the big Big, most expensive item typically. What do we need to know before we consider new luggage? Right, so you might need new luggage now. Your zipper might be broken. The wheels might be broken. So let's think about a few things. Think about what's happening inside the luggage. How is it organized? Do, do they have wheels? Is there a lock? All of that good stuff. Now there are eco-friendly options as well. So those are good things to think about. And then I also love multifunctionality. So uh, this set is from Brandless and it's made out of eco-friendly materials. It comes with packing cubes, a collapsible backpack, all sorts of good stuff inside, wheels, lock. So that's a really good one. And it's on sale, deeply, deeply discounted right nice. now okay. through May. So definitely check that out. And then, for instance, multifunctionality. This is from Great Useful Stuff. This is the Weekender bag. Yeah. Duffel okay. unfolds into this whole thing wow. in the closet of your Airbnb or your So you can hotel. hang it up and see everything yes. in there, like little shelves. How great is that, Very right? Good. Yeah. And then this is the Tom Talk sling. I love this one because it fits way more than you think. And okay. you can sling it, fanny pack it, put it around your back so super multifunctional there as well so that's like the luggage category okay. all super multifunctional so think about things that can do more than one thing exactly. and what about hard-sided versus soft-sided is that just a preference it's a preference and I actually like hard-sided better but be careful of the weight mm -hmm. check it before you buy it because sometimes they tend to be heavy ah that's mm -hmm. good to know and you don't want that when you have to lug it around or yep. put it into the compartment above you right all right let's switch over to shoes and clothing yes. and you have some really cool options brands I haven't heard of and also so they, they have cool features. Absolutely. So a couple options here. These are Kizik sneakers. And what I love about these is that you wear them, you go through security in the airport, mm -hmm. you take them off, and then you can put them right in your feet. You don't have to bend down. You don't have to reach. This pops right back up, and okay. you are ready to go. There's and actually I, little instructions there, Yeah, little too. instructions. So innovative and cool. And plus, I think these are really stylish. They're, you can wear them on the airport, to restaurants, to meetings. So really good there. And then Rothy's, and mm -hmm. you were commenting on these driving shoes. Yes. These so comfortable. So comfortable they're made of fabric and what I love about them is that they can go in the wash oh. so if they get dirty they get sweaty really multifunctional in lots of men's and women's styles as well and then for jackets mm -hmm. so I love something that's packable so just right. in case you're going somewhere cold I always get cold on the plane even I if you're know. going to a tropical place they keep the plane so cold so you want something these look very lightweight actually so they're super lightweight they're from Uniqlo okay. and they have all different styles my favorite is the long one because uh -huh. you can use that as a blanket on oh. the plane yeah but then it also packs down to its own little pouch super compact oh, I've seen that. and it's very, very budget light. friendly I've had that long one for about five years Years. Okay. And so they really, really hold up. This is all Uniqlo. Yes. Okay, very good. So this is great. I like that because you they do different things and you only need one piece to go with you. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's talk about tech. Are there little things that'll just make the flight more you know, enjoyable or the ride wherever you're going? What yeah. kinds of new tech should we be considering? Yeah, so lots of cool things here. So first of all, you want a multifunctional charger. So you can use it on the airplane. You can mm -hmm. use it in the, um, in the airport, hotels. You have lots of outlets. So this is from Travel Candy. Okay. I love this one. This is an international traveler. Mm -hmm. So you can use all sorts of international plugs in oh, it. Right. It has lots of USB holes mm -hmm. and a long five-foot cord that wraps around the body. Okay. So for me, 
I've been using mine for about four years. Okay. I absolutely love it, so that for sure. And then something to think about with tech, mm -hmm. you usually you might have your wireless earbuds. They may not work on the plane. Right. So you want to get a pair of wired. And so JLab has some really good over-ear ones. Okay. They fold. Yeah, Panasonic has some good ones. And these okay. actually have a microphone in them as well. And they're like $11. They're oh. on sale right now. So make sure to get that so you can use right. the, the audio on the yes, plane. Yes, you're right, because you can't depend on the Bluetooth connection. Exactly. Trey Bodge with some really cool new products that will really help us now that we're traveling again. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, next up, travel hacks. How to make the most of the clothes you bring and how to pack them to avoid all those annoying wrinkles. We will see you when Consumer Confidential's Getaway Guidebook returns. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next, who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> From season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And now that you've made your vacation plans and hopefully saved some money, it is time to pack. And whether you're flying or driving, you certainly can't bring your entire wardrobe. But not to worry, lifestyle expert Maureen Petrosky has some simple tips to make sure you have what you need and that you still look good. Now, Maureen, when it comes to packing for a vacation, I feel like the first thing people do is they overpack, they bring too many things, they don't know what they need to bring and leave <laughs> at home. So what should we consider before we even pull the luggage out? The key to not overpacking is to plan ahead. And for me, that means creating an itinerary. So I just got back from Rome mm -hmm. two days ago. Wow. This is my actual itinerary. It doesn't have to be as formal, but you'll see I have the days and what I'm actually doing. Mm -hmm. So then I have a reference for what I need to pack for. If you stick to your plan, you're gonna have much less in here. So you're not just throwing in all your favorite dresses or all your favorite things. Right. So you've got your days there. And then second thing is those shoes. Oh, they take up so much room. <laughs> Can I just tell you, my husband wears a 14. And by the time you put one pair in, you're like, Okay, there goes that carry-on. Well, I've got a three pair limit. That's okay. Oh, okay. Three pairs is the tops. So you look at your itinerary, you see what shoes you need, three, and then you've got to work around that. So right. stick to those three pairs of shoes. So, so it's like yes. a walking pair, maybe sandals. Exactly. And, and what else? And sandals and flats could maybe go in your in your carry-on. Okay. If you're if you're oh. flying somewhere. Okay. But for yes, maybe your sneakers, definitely bring a change of shoes because we're doing a lot of walking. Even your most comfortable shoes mm -hmm. can give you blisters. But so three pairs of shoes and then make sure that you wear something more than once. So oh, okay. You can re-wear things. For me, it's my travel dress. Okay. I wear it on the first day I travel and the day home. home I like traveling. that. Yeah. So you've got that twice. Mm -hmm. And then really Double easy duty. is accessorizing. So you'll got see it. we've got hats and scarves and big beads. So and these go, don't take up room. No, so you can exactly. change a look and you it's still small. You can squeeze them right in into your shoes, into your creases and crevices in here. So this is seven days and seven nights. You literally just unpacked a bag like yes. this. This is real life. This is real life. This okay. is what I really repacked. And so the key when I say accessorize yeah. is to think a little bit outside of the box. This for me is an accessory. So this black and white shirt is over top of my travel dress. Oh, look at you so layers. You can wear a black dress okay. and then I can wear that out at night with some beads. Okay. And something a little more formal okay and then I can throw it on a t-shirt over a dress what about easy. making sure all this stuff doesn't end up all wrinkly people talk about the rolling method but I've seen another technique that you do and I yes. love it so the key for me is and also keeping me organized when I'm traveling mm -hmm. is that I roll according to my day so this yeah. is a whole outfit here everything everything soup to nuts as they yes. would say so that's what's in there so I've got my sweater my jeans my scarf my 
Every unmentionables. There. And then I also will go back and refer to my itinerary so I know what day I'm wearing what. Okay. Especially if you're traveling for work uh -huh. and you've got to go back to back to back or you've got kids and you're packing them too. Yeah, I like that. It's like Monday, here are your outfits. Yeah. Here you go. Take a roll. And don't overthink it. When you're at home with the kids, do they wear seven pairs of pants a day? No. I mean, a week? Oh my God. Right. Or no. seven shirts? No. no, they do and not. And they don't need to. Well, so can I, can I unwrap Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Okay, so you're going to show us how you do this, but you actually put the shirt and the skirt, skirt together. Oh my gosh, this is and great. There it is. And then the great thing about rolling is that it really keeps it from wrinkling mm -hmm. less. Okay. You're never yeah. going to get Not rid bad. of all of the wrinkles, but you're gonna get rid of some of them. And the kids can roll too. So okay. even though I've got my itinerary, if your kids are old enough to walk and talk, they can help pack. Yeah. And if they're old enough to read even better, this is seven days at the beach. I, love I just that. tell them, go grab this, this, and then it cuts down on your time too, and no more stress. Okay, you. very good. So let's talk about the you know important carry-on because that's the thing that you need to have with you in case this gets lost, God forbid. Absolutely. But what should we have in our carry-on that makes the trip more enjoyable? First and foremost, I always use a backpack. Mm -hmm. Keeps your hands free. Yes. So a backpack is great. And then the items you need immediate access to, your identification, your money, your phone, they go right here into a tiny little over the shoulder for me. Okay. So that, don't put that in your backpack. Got it. Backpack, hands free. In your backpack, a few really important things. I do have another pair of sandals there. They're well worn, as you can see. But that is an easy pair of shoes you can slide in. If you're doing an overseas trip, mm -hmm. sometimes there's feet swelling. That's a great oh, thing to yeah, have easy point. access to. A hooded sweatshirt gets cold on a plane, you can go back and forth. A scarf is another great item mm -hmm. to keep it's like on a blanket your, too. It's, and it's tiny, right. it doesn't take up a lot of space. Of course you need your electronics. Yes. It's important to have all your chargers and things, but always, always have something that is not electronic mm -hmm. and something to keep the kids engaged. So I've got yeah. Mad Libs here, a deck of cards, a book for myself to read. Right. But more importantly, traveling can be stressful. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you I pack myself a little self-care kit. I love that little so, mask. I've got eye masks in there. Uh -huh. I've got some fancy hand sanitizer. This one smells like lavender, so it relaxes me a little bit in the high stress like moments. Like, and then my little jade roller or uh -huh. your rose quartz roller. These are things that can it's really small, just- but it makes a big difference, yeah? And it can take just one deep breath. Travel can be a little difficult and a little deep. stressful, but remember, just you're having fun. You're packing to go somewhere. And of course, snacks. Yes, always snacks. My, my the, next there. This is awesome, Maureen. Thank you so much. I can't wait to incorporate some of these on our next vacation because I'm definitely going to use some of your tips. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, that is our time for now. I'm Vicki Wynn, and for all of us here at NBC News, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on another edition of Consumer Confidential on Today All Day. In the meantime, safe travels. Mariana, thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Thank you for having me. It's so great to meet you and also to be at the center of sort of this is your life with yeah. Hamilton across the street, <laughs> and summer. Uh -huh. What is it like to be back on this street where so many good things in your life have happened to get you to the place you are now? It feels like coming home, you know. I'm very comfortable on 46th Street. Um, and I, I love where we are, we're on 45, you know. it's. Uh, they, they treat me like family here. They always have, you know. Saddled up at that bar a couple times, maybe? A couple. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe I will say it nightly, but you know. But here's the real truth. When you do, when you do Broadway shows, the schedule is so odd. Like you exude or exert so much energy at night. Yeah. So theater people become night owls. So you have to have right. find a spot that you can actually wind down. And it is so exciting to be talking to you in this moment. I was just saying to have you where so many good things are happening for you right now, from winning the Golden Globe to hosting SNL to now having an Oscar nomination. Ooh. What does it feel like to hear all those things <laughs> like read that? back to you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that a good? Or? Oh, it's wonderful. It's phenomenal. Like there actually aren't enough adjectives to be frank. Um, it's an ongoing feeling, you know? It's, when I was a kid, I watched the Oscars and I loved watching them, you know, make their acceptance speeches. And I was like, oh, everybody says, and I'd like to thank the Academy. And right. I, I kid you not, I would sit on the floor in my grandmother's living room and mouth the words, I'd like to thank the Academy did with you them. Really? I did, I really did. Oh my um, gosh. So to now be a nominee, it's, it's wild, but I'm also like, it's something I, I threw energy at for such a long time. And we were joking a minute ago about the term <laughs> overnight success. <laughs> yeah, it's because hilarious. Because some people may have just discovered you, <laughs> yeah. but you've been at this for a little bit. What were those early years here? We were trying to find your place in Broadway, find your people, oh, totally. find that community. What was it like? Oh gosh, messy. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was messy. Um, but I mean messy in the way of like, I was just trying all the things. Like I'd take all the classes, I'd go to all the auditions, even the ones I was painfully wrong for. Some highly embarrassing moments. You know, I moved to the city when I was, what, 19 years old? You know, and I got my first job, th first bigger job three months after I'd been here, like pounding the pavement. So, and when I say pounding the pavement, like I lived in Sunnyside, Queens on my friend's couch and I'd get up at 5 a.m. and get myself ready and get myself to the non-equity lines and the, and the equity lines and I'd sign up for everything and just try to get seen, um, you know, and I could afford like 50 cent coffee and maybe a muffin. I really did it. I'm actually very proud of this. I've been in six Broadway shows in a very short amount of time. And I'm very aware that that's an anomaly in and of itself because most people just want one and some people just get one. And it, it's not that it, I have a carefully calculated career, but I, I believe in versatility. So once people do get to know my work, you will realize I don't do the same thing twice. Even if I'm doing musicals, none of them are the same. Um, and now that I get to make on-screen work, I plan to keep that as a general rule. I don't want to do the same type of work because that means you're not growing and changing. And I thrive on challenge and growth and change. And I think it's a cool time for change right about now. Yeah. You know, the industry's changing, listening in a different way. And, you know, people liked... People are talking about firsts right now. I'm sure we'll get to this in the conversation, but might as well just like throw it Go on the it. table. You know, I've been told I'm the first Afro-Latina, the first openly queer woman of color to be nominated for an Oscar. I was like, that's cool. It is cool if those are indeed correct titles. <laughs> um, it's cool to be first because in my mind, that's indicative that there will be more, mm. you know, and it's, that's great change. It's a great mile marker for change, in my opinion. We were joking about your long climb up, but I think your mom says you came out of the womb dancing. Like, <laughs> this was always, yeah. we were always going to end up here in one form or another. As, Probably. With, with you as a performer of some kind. Yeah. Um, and I love the story. I think you were in a chorus line in high school. Yeah. And you came here to see a chorus line. And you looked around and you said, oh, these are my people. Right, like yeah. this is where I need to be. Now mm -hmm. I got to figure out how to get back here. Yep. What was it about being around Broadway? What was that experience like for you to say, okay, this is it? When I came to see a chorus line, there was just an energy that I understood, and that I felt like understood me. And also, a chorus line—it's about dancers. It's mm -hmm. about a dancer's life and trials, tribulations, success. I saw myself. I finally saw myself, and it wasn't about seeing necessarily skin color. It was just about seeing people who were doing the things I loved at the level that I believed I could do it at. But I knew I wanted to try to get there because I just needed to be with those people. And they are my people. They're still my people. Um, now I'm just trying to bring more of my people to the silver screen mm -hmm. in a new way. That doesn't mean I'll always make musicals, but I do think that there's a lot of untapped talent in this community, particularly in the dance community. Dancers make great actors. Sometimes you just gotta give them the tools and an opportunity to see what happens. Evidence sitting right here. I really believe you can see into a person's soul if you just see how they move. You know, I can tell if somebody's shy or if somebody's outgoing or if somebody's, you know, not on the up and up just by how you move. Body language is so telling and dance is even more so. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. 
rioters banged down one of the doors. I think you found a way to reconcile it a year later. It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Was the idea of taking on this beloved piece of art and song and dance and acting and West Side Story and everything that means to so many people, did that feel daunting or were you just excited to get a, a new look at it and a modern take on it? At the time, it didn't feel daunting. Um, don't get me wrong, I had <laughs> my fair share of run-ins with big fans of the film who were like, cool, 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 so don't bleep it up. And I was like, right. that's awesome, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you take it in stride. You know, that's the thing, when you, you're reimagining an iconic character, it's, you, you have to acknowledge that there is an entire generation of people whom my predecessor, the great iconic Rita Moreno, will always be there, Anita. But that's the point of do making this, this film in 2022, so that these characters can become beloved, so that the story can become beloved for an entirely new generation, many of whom had never heard of West Side Story, right. and quite frankly, didn't know who Rita Moreno was, and that's what's sad in my opinion, because she changed the landscape and she opened so many doors, not only for Latinas, but for women in this industry. And the fact that more people d don't know who she is or that because of our film, she's now becoming even more well-known, that's both challenging for me to hear and also really exciting because mm. they should know who she is. Yeah. And in the same breath, I also get to be an Anita for a new generation. And for many Afro-Latinas, they get to see themselves in this work. And that's why you reimagine things, because there's validity in every portrayal. There has to be. Otherwise, a text is not classic. Mm. If you cannot reinterpret it and infuse new energy into it and new meaning, it's not classic. Mm -hmm. It was a one-hit wonder. And I don't think that's West Side Story. I know you met with Rita she sort of gave her blessing. She Maybe, did. Have you been able to start a little friendship with her and hear about her experience in Hollywood and how things oh, are different yeah. now I mean, and how on. she hit that wall <laughs> even after the success of West Side Story? I'm kind of in awe of how open she is. If I had been through some of the things that she'd been mm. through, I don't know that I'd be as open. I might would be, what's the word, jaded. Um, she's not. And... Uh, I, I know I have benefited from time with her, you know, and I've said we didn't actually speak about the character often, but she did share stories about her personal experience and her, her lived experience as a Puerto Rican in the United States. Um, and those were the stories that were actually most helpful to me when I was creating Anita. Mm. That's fascinating. Isn't it? It wasn't about, here's <laughs> it how wasn't I delivered about, here's this the line. Character. We're different than he does. There was never yeah. a world in which I was going to come in and duplicate what she had already done because what was the point? It was great. It, it is iconic. She won an Oscar for it. We've already awarded that portrayal. So I don't need to go in and recreate it. It also became very personal for me because of how I grew up. My mother raised me as a single parent. You know, my father is Puerto Rican, yeah. so he wasn't really around. I didn't have direct access to my Hispanic heritage. So only in my adulthood have I been able to seek out community experiences in order to get to know this part of who I am. It was a very personal and kind of vulnerable experience for me to make this movie, but it's also the, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had because it gave me access. It showed me how beautiful and wonderful and accepting this community can be. Making a, a, a beloved musical or a movie into a movie can be treacherous. Yes. Some of them don't make that leap well. Yes. Um, was it 
gratifying to get the response that you all have received to this? Answer to the question is absolutely. I'm also, I'm an actor who also knows what it's like to be panned. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. I I'm very aware of what it what it can be to make art that is not well re well received and and it can be debilitating and it can really test your will like not your love for the craft but just like rejection's hard P rejection on a massively public scale is even harder mm -hmm. but if we wield it well it can become the thing that challenges us to be better mm. also art is subjective you're not going to please everyone right. so with west side story for me seeing all of this positive reception just makes me want to go <laughs> it can be done. Mm. I really don't like it when people tell me something can't be done, because I don't believe that. There's a part of me, like 19-year-old Ariana's like, no, tell me no, say it one more time, <laughs> a little louder, in the back. <laughs> because it, it was my fire for such a long time. You know, starting out as a dancer, really learning to sing, because I have not always been a vocalist, and quite frankly, I wasn't always even a decent actress the amount of work that goes into becoming quote unquote a triple threat, the amount of work it takes to conjure a performance like Anita because it is so multifaceted to recreate an iconic work like West Side Story and, and then to have it received well, it's just, I kind of relish in it, I'm not gonna lie, because we've shown people it can be done and it can be done well. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Who will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time? When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Well, it's interesting how you came to this extraordinary movie because it sort of blends your life as a Broadway actor into, yeah. into movies, which is that you were in summer. Yeah and you get a phone call that a certain Steven Spielberg wants to see you. <laughs> like tomorrow, I think, he wants yeah. to see you. <laughs> well, and the weird thing was, I didn't even know he was gonna be there. Like, Cindy Toll and our incredible casting director called and was like, just come in, just come in. Did she tell you what it was for specifically? I knew it was for West Side Story. Right. I, and I knew I was going to be asked to sing and dance, and they wanted me to read the sides, and I was like, these are very long sides, so please no. Um, I would be happy to come back if you like what I do, but I, I don't have the time. I gotta go home, eat a chicken breast, and go to sleep so that I can get up and, you know, dance whatever I'm asked to, to dance and execute it well. Um, and she was like, don't worry about it, I got, I got your back. And then I got there and discovered that Steven was actually on the premises and very much part of the audition 
Ariana, I didn't know. She just came in. She was one of thousands of people that came in. And I danced, and he enjoyed it. And I, he asked me to sing, and I sang, and they enjoyed that. And then, you know, he asked me to, if I would read. And I just said, nope, <laughs> no, sir. And he looked at me like I had five heads. And Cindy Tolan, our casting director, came in and was like, we spoke about Ariana. She's starring in a show. She just needs a little more time to be truly prepared. And he said, so you're not going to read? And I said, no, again. <laughs> and he's like, but you will come back. And I said, I'd be honored. But that took some courage. I did it because I actually understood that as a woman of color, when you walk into a room like that, you better be prepared. And if you're not, like that's, that's a missed opportunity. It's a blown opportunity. And because we get so few opportunities, you can't afford to not present well or present, represent yourself well. It's just not mm. something you can do. Um, and I al already felt like it was a long shot anyways, because when I walk in the room, people are like, she's African-American, she's black. And I was like, I'm black. I'm also Afro-Latina. And it's been something that's been hard throughout my career because people don't, people don't seem to understand that you can be both. You know, having Hispanic heritage can mean a multitude of things. Yeah, all that to say, I thought I was a long shot and instead it ended up being a strength for me. And they probably respected you because what you were saying in that moment is, this is so important to me, I want to get this right. I want right. to get it right. Right. Yeah. And then you get a phone call in a nail salon. Yeah. That changes your life. Yes. So the lady behind the counter was very kind and she like swiped for me and helped me pick it up. Hi, I have Steven Spielberg for you. He was like, well, I just sort of was wondering if you would be my Anita. <laughs> he was very clear to, um, to let me know that not only was I his choice, but I was the studio's choice. And they were very um, eager to get behind me and make me feel supported, which they did and still do to this day. And what did your mom say when she got that news, given all you all, two of you have been through together and building your career and moving to dance and perform and all that? Yeah. What was that like for her? What I recall was she was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Well, that's very big. <laughs> my mother is not a stage mom. Mm -hmm. I wish I could tell you she was like the quintessential dance mom. She was, she was just the antithesis of it. She said, here's your costumes, your makeup's in your bag, good luck. And then she would go and grade papers uh, while I, you know, became an independent young woman. It's the best thing she ever did for me, honestly. I was gonna honestly. say, that's probably why you ended up where you are. Yeah. And when she hears about things like an Oscar nomination or mom, I'm going to host SNL in a couple of weeks. Oh. Did she take that in stride or? <laughs> you know what? When my Oscar nom came in, uh, she called and all I heard was Wah! And she was in class. She was teaching. My mom's a public school yeah. teacher and the kids in the back were all whooping and uh -huh. shouting and cheering. And so it was actually really cool. She was like, I can't believe it. You did it. And, that's when I started getting a little misty-eyed. Because I was like, that is really cool. You know? I was like, I, I did do something. I yeah. did that. I earned that. And um, it's lovely. You mentioned growing up your mom, mm -hmm. with your mom, single mother, yeah. in North Carolina. Yeah. What was that like as you showed talent at a pretty young age? What was your childhood like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky. I had a childhood that was filled with angels that showed up to um, support me and my mom. And, um, you know, she, being a first time teacher in a small rural North Carolina town, she didn't make a lot of money. So we figured out ways, you know, um, that I could dance. And my, the dance owner, I mean, the owner of my dance studio, Dory Light of Venner, um, she scholarship me for part of it because she recognized my talent, realized how hard my mom was working and, um, and help me continue to study, you know? I'm really lucky that those angels showed up for me um, and that my mom's always been supportive, my entire family, you know? And isn't it at moments like this where you think about all those people? You're gonna be at the Oscars on the red carpet, they're gonna say your name. Okay. And the dance teacher who gave you a partial scholarship helped to get you there, your mom, obviously, yeah. your grand, like all those people yeah. nudged you to that place. Well, and that's the thing you think about like, awards and whatnot, and I'm just so aware of it. I wouldn't have anything of what I have without those folks. 
and my community may not look like everyone else's, but it's mine and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of my experiences, I'm proud of my background, and I am deeply proud of who I am. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next, who've made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's there! It's there! That's me! That's Isn't you! That oh my it's gosh. It's been here for forever. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. I hope you have a, that poster up somewhere. No, I actually don't have a copy of that. We need to get you one of those. <laughs> well, maybe one day. You know one of my favorite little details, and it means nothing? These lights. I've always loved them. Oh, it's, they just feel very quintessentially like welcome to a theater. Yes. And then you also like, it's always about the Broadway lights, right? Whether right. it's a footlight or a chandelier. Right. Or these little welcoming lights. This is it. I love them. We are across the street from the Rogers Theater. Yeah. A little show called Hamilton. But your original cast. I am. Did you know at the outset back at the public that you were on to something special before the rest of the world caught oh, on to yeah. it? I don't think there's a single person who was part of that original company who didn't understand from even the reading or the workshop that this was special. It's impossible to calculate the full impact of this piece. You know, it really was like a hurricane, you know. I, you know, being in the ensemble, it gave me sort of a purview. I watched my friends and my colleagues become rock stars. I learned a lot from their experience, um, you know, but with great joy and great success comes great challenge as well. So it's a balancing act. It was a balancing act for them. It also taught me that it is imperative that you know your worth and you do not accept discounts. And that's probably the greatest lesson I learned from my time in Hamilton. Was that from watching what everyone was going through personally Yeah, and what time. we collectively went through, you know. When you do have a group of creators that are truly firing on all cylinders, they at the, they're at the top of their game. The game actually becomes, how do we make it better? How do we continue to compete with ourselves so that we're upping the ante, serving the piece? We're not gratuitously telling this story, we are, making a work of art mm. you know it's it's challenging it's hard but i can tell you something else from great discourse comes great art and hamilton is that what was it like in those days <laughs> on know. 46th street it, the, they had to shut down the street and there were yeah. people waiting to see you guys come in and come out at the stage door and that it's was crazy. every single day mm -hmm. and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger as it went what was yeah. that like as an actor to have that kind of fan base and that kind of response to it. It was cool, because it brought such pride and joy and, and validity to what we do, you know. Hamilton changed the game a bit because it reminded folks just how powerful theater is and how mainstream it can be. Um, commercial, the political implications for Hamilton were absolutely astounding. I've never seen so many public servants 
politicians, some of whom I personally agreed with and some of whom I didn't <laughs> showed up to our show, but they, they received its message. Yeah. That's what's cool. You've gone on to such great things, obviously since Hamilton, including the prom. Was that a fun experience for you? Oh, of course it was fun. It was terrifying in the best way, but um, it was also my first um, movie making experience in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, playing scenes with Kerry Washington, yeah. who actually was very much the representation I had. First time I saw her in Save the Last Dance, mm -hmm. beautiful black girl with a fro, I was like, that's me, you know? Gotta be the way you talk about Kerry Washington to think that you are that person. Oh God. That you're that person for some young actor right now. Does that feel overwhelming? Great? You know what I want to show people, young people especially, they have possibility and they can do anything. That's what I want to show them. You better work for it because nobody owes you anything and they certainly not gonna hand you nothing. But if you work really hard and you challenge yourself and you're actually nice to people, what a novel idea, that you actually can achieve your dreams. I know you've got a lot in the pipeline right now, but yeah. as you look out with this new platform that you've earned, yeah. what else is out there? What are you looking at? It's a vast horizon. <laughs> <laughs> no. It um, is actually, there's a lot you could do. I know, I said it jokingly, but I was like, no, it, it actually is a truth. And that's something I'm adjusting to, having choice. I am a triple threat. I'm mm -hmm. good at doing things at the same time. I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll create something. How about that? Okay, and very vague. I don't like established structures and I like building my own structure. So I'm interested in any and all things that allow me to build something for myself. And I'll tell you something right now, I'm not going to make any decisions right now because the moment I'm in is too wonderful to miss a moment of it. Mm. So I'm just gonna be present. But when I have something to share, I'll share it. You have great perspective on all this. Well, I think we can all agree that one of the greatest words I've ever used is no. And um, it continues to be a really great word. I think more people should use it. Well, I hope you get the chance to say the words that you rehearsed on your grandmother's floor. <laughs> That's very scary. <laughs> That's a very scary thought, Willie. Oh, no. Putting it in the universe. <laughs> Let's just get it out there. Thanks. I said it, you didn't. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is great. Hello to everybody in today all day Atlanta. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Pop Star Plus. On the show today, the talented and hilarious Amber Ruffin is our What I Watch guest. And let's just say there's a new comedy that Amber loves. Plus, speaking of love, the lovely Carly Kloss. It's coding by Klossy. Stopped by Studio 1A. She can tell us all the exciting things that are coming up with all the kids who are learning how to code. She's got a great program. And later, a nice memory from our vault with Sandra Bullock. But of course, let's start with today's Pop Star Headlines. We're going to start remembering teen idol Bobby Rydell, the babyface singer known for his hits in the 1960s like Wildwood Days and We Got Love. And his starring role in the big screen classic Bye Bye Birdie, he passed away on Tuesday at the age of 79. And Miguel Almaguer has a look back at his life and career. When the lips are in the start to play, dance with me. His voice. And his charm helped launch Bobby Rydell as a teen idol. Born Robert Louis Ritterelli in 1942, he began singing and playing the drums at just six years old. Quickly finding success with his breakout single, Kissing Time, in 1959. From there, he had hit after hit. I don't care what they say, I won't stay in a world without love. Establishing the young star as a household name. One boy to be with forever and ever. 
his meteoric rise leading him to the big screen, starring alongside Anne Margaret in the 1963 musical film Bye Bye Birdie. He continued touring late in his career with other teen idols forming the group The Golden Boys, talking about it here on Today in 1985. I think there had to be a little bit of uh, competitiveness you know, in the business, but never rivalry. Uh, we always got along very, very well together as friends. His legacy cemented throughout the years in pop culture. And always you will have the glorious memories of Rydell High, Rydell forever. The popular musical Grease, naming its high school after the star. Hello, New York. I'm Father Rydell, and I'm glad to be here. And more recently in the 2018 Oscar-winning film Green Book. Rydell's one-of-a-kind voice, Stealing Hearts, and shaping the next generation of teen idols. For today, Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. Yeah, you youngins are too <laughs> too early for this. Well, they say you're never told to learn something, yeah, but I, I didn't know. know that Rydell High in yep. Greece yeah. was yeah. named after him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting. That cool. Was, yeah. That. Very cool. All right, guys, we're going to move on to Paul McCartney, the legendary Beatles' childhood home, is opening its doors to a new generation of musicians. The UK's National Trust Charity Organization is going to host up-and-coming artists at the property in a project being called the Fourthland Sessions, of course, located at 24thland Street in Liverpool, McCartney's former home, which is cited, cited as being the birth place of the Beatles and a lot of their hits were written there including I saw her standing there and love me do so artists looking for some of that music magic are gonna have their application reviewed by a panel that's gonna include both Sir Paul and his brother Mike those selected will have the opportunity to play their songs inside the iconic oh, site at the house cool. that's, cool. Cool. that's pretty cool that'll happen in June next up Courtney uh, Kardashian and Travis Barker following the drummers performance at Sunday night's Grammys in Las Vegas the Hollywood couple throwing a bit of a wedding. The owner of One Love Wedding Chapel in Vegas confirming to NBC News that Kardashian and Barker held a private ceremony around 2 a.m. Oh, that checks out. 2 a.m. <laughs> uh, it was complete with vows, a bouquet toss, and an Elvis Presley impersonator. Yeah, of course. Uh, a marriage license still has not yet been filed at the Clark County Clerk's Office as of Tuesday. Oh. Uh, but the couple also not confirming the wedding. But Courtney and Travis, if you got married, congratulations. You got engaged <laughs> back in October. So when is it legal when we get the, the Clark County? I have a feeling you're going to ask me that. I have no idea. You're the lawyer but maybe the they have a certain amount of time to file with the clerk's yeah. office okay. to make yeah. it official. Yeah. But it wouldn't be official until you, you have it filed with the Hard state. to file things at 2.30 in the morning. Right. That's right. Not yeah. business yeah. hours. Next up, Pete Davidson. This weekend, the SNL star went viral for the sketch, rapping about something I think we all can relate to. And that's the fact that movies seemingly have gotten just way too long. We're looking at you, new Batman. Davidson was joined by rapper Gunna and actor Simon Rex calling out any film with a running time of over an hour 40 minutes. Here's a clip. Found a flick about to pick it, but right before I click it, I look down right below the line, and that's when I see the run time. Three hours, 27 minutes? Bro, you must be crazy. No thanks, I'm gonna watch a short movie like driving Miss Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Netflix saw the sketch and responded in a funny way. The streaming service tweeting out an entire page of quote unquote short movies in all genres, like Zoolander, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> but what they have in common is all the movies are under two hours. They should oh, actually really make that category. one of their banners. Yeah. You know how they're like, yeah. Binge-worthy, yeah, right, exactly. this or that. <laughs> and finally, hours. The weekend, the chart-topping artist dropped a new music video for Out of Time and keeping up with the purgatory theme of the last album, Don FM, his latest, uh, starting off as a fun karaoke duet before taking a bit of a creepy turn. Oh, boy. We didn't really show you much. Yeah, there, 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 there it comes. Oh, there it comes. That was the oh, karaoke. Oh, oh, so what happens is the weekend is joined eventually by an eerie doctor, played by Jim Carrey. They've been collaborating a lot lately. Of course, Carrey's featured in several tracks on Don FM and the album's Prime Video stream. So oh, cool. watch oh, the video. Something see. for everybody in that pop right, Yeah, of course. Oh, oh, right, he's he's a multi generational pop star. Yes, it was. All right, let's get to the plus in Pop Star Plus. A few more headlines. First up, Lady Gaga, the pop queen, donned several looks at this weekend's Grammy Awards.
Awards, but one of her dresses was extra special. That's because it was designed by none other than Lady Gaga's own sister, Natalie Germanata. The vintage Hollywood teal gown was made custom by Natalie's design house, which is called Top Studio. Inside, the tag is embroidered with Gaga's real name, which is Steph, short for Stephanie, just making her win for best pop album that much sweeter. Pretty cool. And finally, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the band stopped by the Howard Stern Show this week. Chad Smith opening up on the recent passing of fellow drummer Taylor Hawkins of Foo Fighters, sharing some heartwarming memories of his good friend, including the time that he asked Taylor to be his son's godfather. When I asked him to be my son's godfather, I said, uh, Taylor, can you, do you think you'd be the godfather to Beckett? And he goes, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, well, well um, you know, yeah. What do I got to do? I go, I, I don't, I, you know, not, <laughs> not really anything. He goes, okay, great, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good memory there. All right, so we've covered your pop star headlines. Up next, a very funny Amber Ruffin is revealing the shows that she just can't get enough of. Stay with us. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back here on Popstar Plus. Amber Ruffin is the latest guest for our What I Watch series. The comedian and actor was nice enough to tell us all about the very long list of shows that she cannot stop watching. What I watch when I can't fall asleep is not a good question for me. I can always fall asleep. TV cannot help me. I'm great at sleeping. If America was in the Olympics for sleeping, I would represent our country and I would bring home the gold. I'm good at sleeping. What I watch when it's late at night. I like to watch every late night show. Every late night show there's ever been, I love to watch it. I love to watch the old late night shows, I love to watch it now. Only because when I was watching it, I never thought I would have a late night show. But when you have one and you watch it, it's different. That was great! You know what else is great? Finally making this show for you all! When I was preparing for this season of The Amber Ruffin Show, I watched, um, you know, I watched some Carol Burnett. I did, I watched some Dick Cavett. I watched some of those old like variety show, variety shows. And it was very clear how little you needed. <laughs> There's just people goofing around. And I was like, oh, you know, what a relief. Like those cool things we remember. We're just people goofing around. And that's a torch I'm willing to carry to this day. <laughs> What do I watch? I like to, when it's late, I do like to catch up. So when I'm catching up, I'm catching up on my favorite shows. And my favorite shows are Queens. I watched every last episode in real time. And I can't just be allotting time from eight to nine at night. I still have work to do. And then Abbott Elementary. Hey, yo! What it do, baby boobs? What y'all think about this little film crew I brought in here? Distracting, makes our jobs harder. But exciting, we about to be on TV. Because they are covering underfunded, poorly managed public schools in America. No press is bad press, Barb. Look at Mel Gibson, still thriving. <laughs> Abbott Elementary is great. It is just very character-driven. 
But I do think that Abbott Elementary found some very fun characters and leaned into them. And even though they're big characters, you haven't seen them before. You know, they found a new take on, you know, the bully and a new take on the nerd. Like, it's all so fresh. It's great. And Quinta is the best. What I watch when I need comfort food is the same thing everyone watches when they need comfort food. And that's Ted Lasso. It's the most comforting show on planet Earth. It's just as good as everybody says. But the people who love Ted Lasso might not know that they also love Joe Para's show, Joe Para Talks With You. It is this very gentle comedian and <laughs> he just is living in, I think, Wisconsin and, you know, being his gentle self and, you know, whittling wood and stuff. And along those same lines, John Wilson, How To With John Wilson is also a very comforting show where, you know, not a lot happens, but it stays interesting. And then afterwards you feel a little happier. Those are the three shows. What I watch that might surprise people is, it shouldn't, but it always does, is Grey's Anatomy. Man, I've been watching Grey's Anatomy since the very beginning. It probably started, I don't know, at this point, 12, 18 years ago. It's a million years old. What I watch that reminds me of my childhood, I don't have an answer to this question, but what I don't watch that reminds me of my childhood is Pen15. Pen15 is the show about those two very nerdy nerds going through high school or junior high, but it was so exactly what it was like to be made fun of in school that it was, and I was made fun of like no one's business, that it, I just couldn't watch it. There were these boys in our grade who were not kind to Look, Maya. I need you to beat them up, yeah. Gigi. Like, it just needs to happen. Why should I? See, like I told you, he wouldn't care. This is literally like the worst day of my life and he'll probably call me you just too. I, I tried, <laughs> I tried, and it was hilarious, but it just felt, it is too soon. <laughs> it's too soon. It's too terrible. Too accurate a depiction. Could not watch it. Never will. Great show. I'll never see it. What I watch that I'm obsessed with right now. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. That was so good. I mean, also, I remember each one of those moments. But it was great. And then I kept forgetting that it was Jessica Chastain. She did such a good job. And Andrew Garfield. I was like, how? Are they doing this? It was a great movie. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. When I want to laugh, I guess I watch Saturday Night Live. A huge Saturday Night Live guy. Times a million, I love it. I've always loved it. And I'm not one of those freaking turds who's like, it used to be that. SNL is good today. It was good yesterday. It was good when I was eight. It'll be good in eight more years. It'll always be good. SNL is always good. I love Amber. We hosted New Year's Eve once together. She's the best. By the way, be sure and catch new episodes of the Amber Ruffin Show. They're on Fridays on Peacock. Just ahead, we are coding with Klossy, our visit with Carly Kloss. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. 
what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. And welcome back. Carly Kloss is the brains behind her program, Code with Klossy. It's given a lot of young people some really great experience in the world of coding. And Carly paid us a visit here to Studio 1A to update us on what's ahead. We're back with a woman who does it all. Her name is Carly Claus. She's a model, she's an entrepreneur. She's driving her passion project. It's called Code with Classy. It's a free two week camp. It empowers young girls to get into tech. And since the last time we spoke in person, Carly changed a little. She uh, had a new beautiful addition. She's now a mom. Carly, good morning. I wanted to talk to you about this camp, and then Levi stepped into the picture, <laughs> I and I was like, bye-bye. But know. what is, tell us about Levi's uh, just turned one. Just turned one, I know. It's wild. It's the greatest joy that I never knew. Yeah. It's it's the best. And we read your book all the time. You are so, you're so sweet. Did you know the moment Levi was placed in your arms, or did it take a minute to fall in love? What was it like the for you? The moment he was placed in my arms, I, yeah. lit I literally cry, by the way, at commercials now, yeah. so I might cry right now, but I, I just had this moment of like, wow, every woman who has a child, every parent goes through this. Yeah. And it's just the most profound experience that I had no idea until having a kid. And isn't it weird, like all the things you thought were important or all yes. the needs that you thought needed Ugh. to be met suddenly just Priorities kind of melted change. away. Everything changes. I think the last few years have it's changed us as well, but becoming a mom, I, I have become, first of all, so much more efficient with my time. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm yes, actually yes. on time everywhere now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm good. I'm always a multitasker. You know me, I'm doing a thousand of things. But I think priorities just change. How did it change this camp that you have, which is extraordinary? It's been Thank around you. for eight summers. Yes. You are teaching girls tech. I mean, yes. this is, there's like, you know, they always say the best business model is find a need and fill it. Yes. You did that. You found a need and filled it. Well, it really came out of this it, it, real desire that I had to learn these skills. So eight years ago, I learned how to code and I mm -hmm. had a following on social media. And I thought, what do these young women who are following me on social media really need to know? Mm -hmm. And these technical skills are applicable to every industry. How? How are Te they? Because technology is transforming mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. in every way. And young women need to be a part of creating that change. Why was was that a desire for you? Why did you even care about coding and why were you interested? Well, I grew up in a house of all girls mm -hmm. and I had parents who helped us realize we could do anything mm -hmm. that we set our mind to despite our gender or anything. And I just was so infuriated by the fact that there weren't women in these industries at leadership levels or at mm -hmm. even equal representation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really try and do is create a space that is inclusive and creative and fun to learn how to code. And it's all for free. Is there a common thread that runs through the, the young girls who come to your camp? They are all passionate mm -hmm. in so many directions. Mm -hmm. And they, by the way, I, I really admire this generation. They realize the power that they have they? to change the world. And they're using the coding skills that they learn to build real, to attack real problems, climate change or building businesses. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And this camp is extraordinary. It's free. I mean, Full just think free. about that for a second. Yes. So I know a lot of young girls probably watching are going like, if I'd love to be part of that, yes. how do you narrow down the number of girls? Because this is a camp you have across the country. Yes, well, around the world yeah. now. So the past two years, we've been virtual. And yeah. this summer, we're going to be both in camp, in person, across the United States, and also virtual. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have 5,000 scholarships Stop for it. free. So anyone out there between the ages of 13 and 18 who wants to learn how to code for free, check us out at Code with classy.com what do you love to have you what are you learning about because this has been around for eight years yes. the girls who kind of graduate from this program oh what how are they changing or how have they continued to use this i am blown away yeah. by the young women who are alums of our, our program somebody's here today atasha she's just so impressive and they're they're already in the workforce and also by the way they're they don't even need to graduate college they're 
are using their computer science skills uh -huh. to build apps and websites that are making real change in their communities. And this is why this education is so important. Look at your life. You're a model, <laughs> you're a mom, you're changing the well, world. By the way, I know you, you hurt your leg. How is your leg feeling? If well, I'm a bit of a klutz generally, <laughs> so it's kind of a miracle that this hasn't happened sooner with these giraffe legs and knobby <laughs> knees, but I'm, I'm But you're okay. okay. I'm rocking you're a on sneaker. The heat. You're on yes. the heat. You're on the, you're on on the, the men. men. All right, Carly, yes. we want to thank you so much. Another big thanks to Carly and congratulations for being a new mom, and we appreciate her hanging out with us. Still to come, from our vault, Sandra Bullock's Need for Speed. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with Popstar Plus. Oscar winner Sandra Bullock is back on the big screen with her newest movie, The Lost City. And in her honor, we thought it'd be fun to flash back to another one of her action-packed films, Speed. Let's check out Sandra when she visited us here at Today back in 1994. Sandra Bullock's a relative newcomer to Hollywood, but her offbeat ways and leading lady looks are helping her fit right in. Bullock got her first big break playing the missing woman in the American remake of The Vanishing. Nice Last year, she played an aspiring country and western singer in The Thing Called Love. You know, I've been sitting here and thinking that I'm Maybe I'll go to Hollywood, become a movie star. And become a movie star she did. She appeared opposite Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man. I'm impressed. Push me. <laughs> and now she's back in action in the new movie Speed, co-starring with Keanu Reeves and Dennis Hopper. And this morning, Sandra Bullock's up early. She's at our studios in Burbank. Sandra, good morning. How you doing? <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> oh. Now, what is... Now, I didn't write that thing earlier, the one that Katie said. What is this dark-haired, somewhat funny chick label? Where's that from? My mother. No. <laughs> I have no idea. Huh? I have no idea. Are you sure you didn't write it? I swear, I had nothing to do with it. Absolutely okay. nothing. I have I have no idea where the somewhat came from. Okay. Because I would have just had dark haired funny chick. Oh yeah, that know? that label yeah. fits. Yeah, pretty, the hair is dark. Yeah, yeah I, I got that so. part of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, is, is it true that people thought you were a little bit um, off center for taking the co-starring role in this film? Is that is that right? What I hear. Well, I think I think about the whole project. People were a little, um, I don't know if hesitant or they just they criticized a lot because. Um, I just done Demolition Man, and so taking something like this that quickly afterwards, I think, made people think that I was a little out of my mind, which <laughs> my family has known for years. Um, but it, it was just so good. You can't, you can't afford not to do roles like this when they come along, regardless, you know, if they happen to be in two action movies or if they happen to be in two comedies or in two dramas, you know, you just you take it when you can get it. So, no, con um, no concerns that Hollywood then labels you a, 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 a action film actress? Not really, because I don't do all that much of the action, you know. I mean, they have the, um, the very strong and capable men to do that. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, look, in, in this film, you play um, Annie, a passenger who, who becomes the driver of a bus that is set to explode if it goes less than 50 miles an hour. Um, let me play devil's advocate. Why would a serious actress want to do such a role? Because it's probably, um, it was probably one of the hardest roles I had to do. Because you have such a short time in which to establish a character. And the, the material was so well written. And it was funny. And it was edgy. And at that time, I was so exhausted. I mean, the, the thought of doing something that was going to be so easy and fun to do um, was very appealing. And, and even though it is an action film, even though the action takes precedent over you know, the development of somebody's, you know, someone's character, um, the short amount of time that you have to sort of establish who you are and what your character is about is is incredibly challenging. You have to get oh. across an emotion within like two seconds and have everyone believe you. So it you don't have the luxury of the words to to um, to help you into the character, and it, it sort of fine tunes you a little bit. I mean, I well, think I came out of it a little more um, trained, actually. Well, let's <laughs> check out your emotion and your driving ability <laughs> in this clip from Speed. Nice work. Nice work. Hey, look. Um, in in terms in terms of your career, is, is this is this film you viewing this as kind of like a springboard to bigger and better? Um, you know, actually, every time I do something, I never look at it as a springboard to anything else because I assume that anything that I'm in, nobody's going to want to go see. Oh, so. come on. No, I mean, you know, I think I've I've really taken on a very pessimistic attitude, but I I had such a good time in it and. the the people I just really liked. So I, I would hope that it would do well and that everyone would like it as much as I did, but usually that's not the case. So if, if it is a springboard, that would be really great and I would really appreciate it. But if it isn't, then, you know, I've, I've got enough energy to keep doing this until, you know, I do learn how to dive off the <laughs> springboard. <laughs> You're the mm -hmm. daughter of an opera singer and an opera coach. Mm -hmm. Did you ever come close to having any, any opera ambitions? Nobody wants to hear me sing. Nobody who's ever heard me sing wants to hear me sing. I, I can yell loudly, and I benefited from good lungs, but, I got you. you know, nobody wants to hear I got me you. sing. Well, you're a dark-haired, somewhat funny, somewhat singing chick. Yeah. Hey, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank good luck. you very much. Thank you. Well, there you go. She's always so great when she's here. That was a really fun conversation back in 1994. All right, that's going to do it for today's Pop Star Plus. We hope you enjoyed the show. Tomorrow, we're right here. We'll be doing it again. We're going to be getting starstruck with a look at HBO Max's comedy's second season. We'll see you then. Have a great day. get to here in Studio 1A. Let's get right to it. We're going to start off with yet another devastating tornado outbreak in the south, a region bracing for even more severe weather on the way. We'll let you know where it's headed next. And then we are so excited to introduce you to the brother-sister duo who are using their TikTok fame to inspire and break down the stereotypes of autism. Their story is so sweet, you do not want to miss it. And if it's happening in Hollywood, you know Justin Sylvester's got all the juicy scoop. This time he's spilling the tea on what you did not see at the Grammys. Who's there? Okay, well, what, why should we wait any longer? Let's do it. Here's our next episode of Today, Today in 30. 30. NBC's Morgan Chesky joins us from Allendale, South Carolina. Morgan, good morning. Yeah, Savannah Hoda, good morning. Just a relentless string of storms that's now leaving damage behind from Texas to South Carolina. And as we pull out now, you can get a glimpse of the scope of the damage here in Allendale. This is where officials issued that incredibly rare tornado emergency just minutes before this storm struck. Officials telling us at least three people were injured in this area and damage was left behind that struck dozens of buildings and perhaps most frustrating frustrating of all today, the threat of severe weather 
isn't over yet. Yo, what you're seeing is a tornado out. This morning, more severe weather is headed to the storm ravaged south. More than three dozen tornadoes reported across six states since Monday. Tornado behind RR, ladies and gentlemen. The latest, this massive twister in Allendale, South Carolina, carving a 15 mile path of destruction Tuesday night. That means very dangerous. You have to take cover now. That warning, even forcing lawmakers to shelter in the basement of the South Carolina State House. Violent storms killed a woman in Bryan County, Georgia. In Newton, Mississippi, this suspected tornado captured on surveillance video as blinding rain and winds moved in in seconds. The aftermath seen nearby with branches littered across highways. In Alabama, more possible twisters shearing trees, flipping cars, and tossing trailers. It was all still in just one minute, and then the next few seconds sound like a train was outside. The deadly storms first moved through Texas late Monday night, killing one man when a tree fell on his home near Tyler. In Johnson County, one woman was rushing to escape when the storm lifted up her entire house. Before I knew it, it blew my glass doors in, and then the house just started tumbling. Brittany Deaton is hurt but alive this morning thanks to her dad. He ran to the rescue after she became trapped inside the family's RV. But just as they ran for cover, powerful winds rolled the trailer right on top of them. I got hit by something and fell over and it scratched me all up and my dad got hit by the trailer. He's now recovering in a hospital. His family calling him a hero. Because he saved her in my thoughts. He saved my daughter. This dangerous system that drenched multiple states is now causing major flooding and bringing with it golf ball sized hail. And today, the rain, wind and tornado risk happening all over again as another round of dangerous spring storms get ready to strike the south. National Weather Service officials are expected to visit this area today to investigate the full scope of this tornado damage. While they haven't rated the category of this suspected twister, they did say that on radar debris from this community was seen pulled up into the atmosphere as high as 20,000 feet in the air as the system tore through. Savannah. All right, Morgan Chesky, thank you. Let us go to that remarkable comeback story shaping up down in Augusta, Georgia. Remarkable indeed, because around this time tomorrow, if all goes according to plan, Tiger Woods says he will, in fact, be teeing off at the Masters, something that seemed nearly impossible just a few months ago. In a moment, we'll talk about that with one of Tiger's close friends, Nota Begay the third. But first, NBC's Kerry Sanders. He joins us from Augusta National. Hey, Kerry, good morning. Good morning, guys. Look, all eyes on Tiger Woods. Uh, what we do know is, weather permitting, and we had quite a downpour here yesterday, that Tiger Woods will have a nine-hole practice round today. And while he doesn't have to make the final decision if he's going to play until tee time tomorrow, all indications are he's going to be going for a record-tying sixth Masters win. All signs point to a miraculous return to the Masters for Tiger Woods. As of right now, I feel like I am going to play. Woods not only determined to play, but says if he does tee off tomorrow, he's going for the green. Jacket, that is. If I feel like I can still win, I'm going to play. But if I feel like I can't, then you won't see me out here. If Woods competes, this will be his 24th Masters tournament, though this road to Augusta was by far the most difficult. It's been just 14 months since his right leg was crushed in a rollover accident. Doctors considered amputation, but chose pins, rods, and screws to save it. Woods spent three months in a hospital bed and endured months of painful rehab. I don't have any qualms about what I can do physically from a golf standpoint. It's now walking is the hard part. The steep terrain golfers must walk at Augusta National is notorious. On the 10th hole from where a golfer tees off to the lowest point of the fairway is a drop greater than the height of the Statue of Liberty. From the highest point of the course to the lowest is nearly the size of Niagara Falls. You can feel Augusta National in your shins after you play. So four days of that when he hasn't done this in over a year and a half, that's a lot to ask. Fans are elated to see his return to play. He has nothing left to prove. It's really just for him. So I think for a lot of people, they can see a little bit of themselves in it. Friend and fellow golfer Rory McIlroy is one of those not counting out a possible win for Woods. I'm not surprised at anything he does anymore. 
Should Tiger take home a sixth Masters win, he would tie the record with Jack Nicholas, the golf legend weighing Wood's odds, writing in part, Tiger wouldn't tee it up if he didn't think he could compete and win. In 2019, he remembered how to win. If his body holds up, could he do it again? Sports betting sites uh, suggest that it's a really stretch here. 50 to 1 that Tiger Woods will get a six Masters green jacket. But as we know from his history, you never count Tiger Woods out. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. April is Autism Awareness Month, and this morning we have a special story for you. A brother-sister team from Richmond, Virginia, spreading joy, laughter, and knowledge about the disorder that affects more than 70 million people worldwide. Their popular TikTok videos are a glimpse into life with autism. They've racked up tens of millions of views. We're going to talk to them in just a moment. There they are, but first, their inspiring story. You were stranded on a desert island. What three things would you bring with you? Hot sauce. You can, <laughs> you can never go wrong with hot sauce. Hot sauce lover, sports fanatic, and Taco Bell enthusiast, 28-year-old Ryan McGuire is a star on TikTok. You went to Taco Bell without me? Did you want to go? Uh, yeah, I wanted to go. It's too late now. Ryan was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder at three years old. His 25-year-old sister, Brittany, known on TikTok as Taco Bell Queen, started sharing lighthearted videos of her brother she calls Rye Guy just a few years ago. How do I look? Her first post went viral overnight. What happened to your face? <coughs> you don't like it? No. <laughs> Well, that's hurtful. Brittany continued to share more videos of Ryan. Fans quickly falling in love with her brother's brutal honesty, quick wit, and joyful reactions. Ooh, the white New York Knicks socks. What started as simple fun quickly turned into a platform to spread autism awareness. Now, over 3 million followers cheer on the McGuire siblings. Hoping to help other families, Brittany has been open about what it was like growing up with an autistic brother. One of the questions that I get a lot is, have Ryan and I always been close? The answer is no, honestly not. Brittany struggled to understand Ryan's disorder. Like many with autism, Ryan deals with communication challenges and anxiety. There would just be some moments where I would just break down in tears because I did not know how to relate to him. I didn't know, I didn't know how to talk to him. But the videos became a life-changing gift for the siblings. Those fun recordings helped forge an incredible bond. I feel like TikTok has tremendously improved our relationship. I love being around him. I am blessed to be his sister. He lights up every single room that he walks into. Lighting up rooms and spreading a message of acceptance. Here's one thing y'all need to remember about autism, okay? Listen carefully. Autism is not an illness. Autism is how the brain functions. You're different, but you're not less. 
That's correct. Now, now you need to post that on TikTok. Spread that message. Yes. And we're so happy to help him do it. The dynamic duo, yes. Brittany and Ryan McGuire. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. You're on the Today Show. Yes, I, we are. <laughs> we are. It's so exciting. Brittany, I mean, could you have imagined how this would take off this little video mm -hmm. with your brother making fun of your face mask <laughs> <laughs> became a sensation honestly no and but it's it's been such a rewarding experience and it's been beautiful for the both of us and we're just so blessed to have what we do mm -hmm. yeah it's a uh -huh. good time it was a real good time. It still mm -hmm. is. Ryan, yep. you, you walked in our studio and you lit the place up. You were just <laughs> sunshine. Uh -huh. So I can only imagine when people see you on the street uh -huh. now with your 3.4 million followers. Uh huh. 3.4 million. Is that million. crazy? <laughs> so what do they say when they see you? you know, well, when they when they very first say me, it's like. Whoa, you're that right guy from TikTok. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whoa, you're, aren't you that right guy from TikTok? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's like. It blows my mind. What do you, do you like it? I, I love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. What do you say? What do you say back? I go, yes, I am. <laughs> sure am. It seems like you're comfortable being in public and you talk about anxiety. Has has uh, TikTok changed the way you feel? Oh, uh-huh. It, yeah. it really has, and it really has eased my anxiety level. Yeah. Like the social aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Stepping out of your comfort zone a little Yeah, bit. it's like I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and into the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> into the fire. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> into the fire. The water's warm. Everyone loves you. You're a sensation. What has it meant for this relationship? Yeah. It's meant everything, honestly, because, you know, when kind of like in the, in the beginning of the video, when we were kids, it was really hard for me to kind of process and understand when I'm trying to really learn who I am, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, TikTok brought us together because it gave us a way to bond and to find something that we both enjoy, like having in common and everything. Because he's a big sports guy and he knows a lot more than I do. It, it, it helped us bond more. Absolutely. Yeah. It more. helped me get a better understanding. Ryan, what do you think people learn about autism yeah. when they see these mm -hmm. videos? Well, what they learn is they learn what autism is and they learn what autism to how you want to be treated. How I want to be treated. Absolutely. How autism want, needs to be treated. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You said you're a huge sports fan. Yeah. What's your number one favorite, yeah. like basketball team? Knicks. It uh, is? It is like the, the Knicks. Knicks. Oh, well, love you know the Knicks. What? Can I tell you? I think the Knicks love you because look what they left. What are they leaving? Like? They left a little. Oh. Bag. Would you open that? Just see what's in there. <gasps> sure. <laughs> oh wow, New York forever. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nice. I can hold, I can hold it. Uh, sure. What? Uh, what oh, oh, what's this? Whose jersey is Who's that? that? <gasps> oh boy, Derek Rose. <laughs> oh, we turned it around. Derek Rose. Is Derek Rose your favorite? It, yes. Wait, I think he might have signed it, it there too. What, what dude? Put he put signed it. Down, it? Wait a little bit. Put can it down I, a little <gasps> bit. Wait, Look at that. Can I tell you something else? What? What's that? Ryan, uh, Derek. Oh I feel like he might know you. Take a look at the monitors monitor. and he hear what he has to say. Hey, what's up, Ryan? It's D Rose. I've been watching your TikTok videos from afar and I love them. Thanks for being a fan. On behalf of the Garden of Dreams Foundation, we would like to invite you and your family to the Knicks and Next game tonight. <laughs> Make sure you wear the jersey and don't forget, be safe. Dude, are you oh, busy tonight? Can you go to the Knicks the, game? Oh, oh yeah, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> What do you think? Hey, I love it. <laughs> love it. That's Derek Rose. That was my boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Favorite boy. player. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to wear that jersey? Oh, you're going to yeah. be in the stands? Will you take oh, a picture for us oh, so we can see? Oh, yeah. I'll take a pic. Yeah, <laughs> do a TikTok. Do a TikTok. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, this is awesome. And I know, um, Brittany, you're, you're a big yeah. Mavericks fan yeah. because... Ryan told you. <laughs> Ryan told he me I was. You. Yeah. Yes, yes. Does right. she love the Mavericks? She loves them. She loves them. <laughs> wow. Yes. We will. We want to thank the Knicks again for the little swag bag and also for the invite for you. Y'all have a great time at the game and thanks thank for the you. message you're spreading. It's thank more you. than all this. We really appreciate it. And we want to mention too, Brittany, you wrote a beautiful essay about your relationship. We encourage everyone to read it. It's on today.com. Thank you. Did thank you have fun you here? So thank you all so much. We Absolutely. Had we had a blast. Oh, good. Absolutely. Have more fun tonight. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. <laughs> To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next 
who've made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This morning, we are kicking off our series. It's called Flea Market Finds, where today Lifestyle and Commerce contributor Jill Martin goes in search of treasures and meets some incredible artists. So, Jill, <laughs> you just did this. Explain to us what a flea market is. I'm just so jazzed about this segment because it's small businesses all together That's that great. are curated, and you could find really incredible use. We'll get into your story after because you had a flea market find, too. So, all right. You know I love a bargain, and I'm always on the lookout for unique and incredible small businesses to share. A few months ago, I was doing just that when I met Lily. I fell in love with her and her designs. They're one of a kind, and so is she. Take a look. Lily, <laughs> Lily, that's too much for me. We met at the Sample Road Flea Market in Boca Raton. Do you remember what happened when I came to your booth? Yes, your, your mouth dropped, and you just couldn't believe what you see. 82 year old Lily Hogarth has always been a fashionista. You've been actually doing this since you were four years old, right? Oh, you were yes. always creating. Tell me about that. Yes, I used to make like little dresses for dolls. After growing up in Jamaica, Lily moved to Florida when she was 26, and she was always designing along the way. What should people know about being a fashion designer that they may not know? The time it takes and the energy and the love you put in it to get it together, it takes a lot. Lily owned an alteration shop for 10 years before making her mark on the flea market scene with her store, Celeb Funky Couture. How would you describe what it's like to shop at a booth in a flea market? It's excellent. It has a lot of things that you maybe you would even get it somewhere else. You know, you meet everybody from Canadians to Europeans to Americans to Jill to everybody. Do you feel like it's different than being in a retail store? Your price have to be left, even if it's worth more. Sometimes it do hurt me, but I understand. Believe me, I know about getting a deal, but people like to think they're getting a deal, right? Right, that's it. So I bought splatter paint items. I bought items with different patches. I bought items that had jean pockets as the pockets to the bag. It's one of a kind. It's very unique pieces. I'm not afraid to put different colors, quality fabric, expensive fabric. You told me you make every piece with love. Tell me what you meant by that. It makes me happy. It gives me joy doing it. Putting a piece there, putting a piece there, doing a piece here, and then sometime I have to remove something and I find something else and it works. 
Wow. I'm like just looking at this gorgeous bag. This is one of her creations. Yeah, so it's so unique. I mean, everyone is one of a kind. This was the jeans pockets that I was talking about. And, you know, a lot of people don't know about flea market shopping. I had a booth growing up. You had a booth growing up. Al, you said you got a great piece of art. I did. At the flea market. What did but, you sell? Um, we sold Lucite. My mother personalized it. But oh. I have tips for people who are going to the flea market that mm -hmm. you should wear comfortable shoes. Right. Mm -hmm. You should bring a big light bag that you can carry mm -hmm. so that you could fill it up or I bring a little cart that folds <laughs> up um, and ask the right questions. Ask about the material. Where did these jeans come from? Where did you get this fabric? There's lining in this that's unique. Everyone has a story and it's made with so much love. Every time I wear this, I'm just so excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember yeah. being there. I was visiting my um, mother and father-in-law in Florida. So it's just very exciting. Can and you then, haggle? So the haggling, it sort of has a negative connotation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, feel, I feel guilty doing well, and like she but said, they expect you to do that. Yeah. So it's a thing, yeah. like as you would say. It's a thing. It's you okay. know, so they want you to, first of all, just be as usual, be nice. Yeah, be, be like, nice. is there anything you can do? Yeah. And if you purchase multiple items, like I bought most of the stuff that's on the set here oh, today. Wow. Uh -huh. So you could say, if I buy this and I buy the jacket and I buy the bag, can you give me a deal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could expect to take at least 10 to 15% off oh. that price because they expect to do that. All right. And so I love flea market shopping, and we'll be back with more. She's and I'm just good. so and jazzed for Lily. You get items that everybody talks about. Where did you get yeah, that? Yeah, today. That? Everyone's really like, where did cute. you get that? I got it's it so from special. Lily. I love go. it. It's Jill, like before Etsy so much. and those kinds of things. Yes. There are flea markets for you. I, mean, I guess Etsy's things. kind of an online That's why I think flea. that. Yeah. 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 That's true. All right. Thank well, you tomorrow, too. Jill is back with more hidden gems because she is going to show us flea market jewelry finds. It's a good series. Right. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> season two. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So many celebrity headlines to get to, so so little time. Thankfully, we've got our pal Justin Sylvester, the pulse of Hollywood and Vegas. He's breaking down the scoop. First of all, thanks for your moral support, no, Justin. Justin, why would Love you do you. that to me? You know what, Jenna? We have lost too many national treasures already, okay? We lost Betty White. Ellen's leaving TV. Oprah won't come out of her house for less than $8 million. We cannot afford to lose Hoda. Actually, someone bubble wrap her. Bubble wrap her right now. All right, let's talk about it, honey. You were at the Grammys. We were so envious. It was an amazing time. Did you get to see a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff? What went down? First of all, I am shocked that I am even here today because the Grammys were so wild. You. But I'm surprised that, that there even had a Grammys because all the stars were out the night before and they were lit, honey. Like, lit. <laughs> Where were you they? You had... <laughs> Oh, you had Dua Lipa walking around the wind with her posse, no security, just enjoying the time. And then when I went to the Silk Sonic concert, I saw BTS front and center what? having Wait. a good old time to Bruno Mars. Wait, what? what? In the Silk Sonic They had a concert, concert. What are you Friday talking night? about? Saturday they had a night? concert on Friday night because oh. they have a Las Vegas residency. So it was crazy. So then... I went to Excess, you know, for research and development, which is why I have all those charges on my NBC credit card for vodkas and tequilas, okay? Mm -hmm. And I saw half the nominees living it up there. Who did you dance with? Yeah. Anybody Who cool? Was fun Give and us nice. the scoop. 
Well, I couldn't really get into VIP, <laughs> so I wasn't really in the mix of it. But listen to this. <laughs> what? After the Grammys that night, all the celebrities went out and everybody was talking about Meg Thee Stallion and Dua Lipa's moment. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know why? Why? Because it was giving a throwback to that Whitney Houston, Mariah yeah. Carey moment from the VMAs mm. in 1998 when they had the same brown dress on. Yes. Ooh. Even Mariah Carey herself tweeted about this moment. She was so in shock. Wow. That's super, oh, super yes. great. I love it. I okay, love it. We also, we, we alluded to this. Is it true that Kourtney Kardashian got married? Girl, Kris Jenner nearly flatlined in Calabasas <laughs> on Monday when she woke up and she heard that Kourtney and Travis got married at the One Love Wedding Chapel. Now, the owner said they arrived alone for the 30-minute ceremony and that no one else was there, but I have budget at the scoop. So I had the crime scene photos digitally <laughs> recreated so you guys could see what it would look like, okay? So they said they had an Elvis impersonator. So we did some digging over here at uh -huh. E, and we heard that this is not legally binding. Oh. As we know now, we can't find a marriage certificate and we can find no one to say that they actually signed the marriage license. So Chris, You'll be okay for a minute. Right. But, but you, I want to know. Yeah. You guys have daughters. Mm -hmm. What would you do if you woke up on Monday morning and found out your daughter got married in Vegas? Well, they're nine. Well, yeah, it would be illegal. Five. Illegal. <laughs> There'd be criminal charges. So we'd be terrified. <laughs> yeah. <it would> be. <laughs> Wait, but is there going to be a wedding? What's happening? Uh, well, yeah. We know they're oh, engaged. The Kardashians always do it big. We know they love a big moment. And don't forget, this is Kourtney Kardashian's first ever wedding. You know, we all forgot what? that she wasn't married to Scott oh, Disick. Right, so right, right. she oh, yes. is going to give it to us for sure. If she had to go through Kim's four weddings, oh. she's definitely going to come to this one. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, what's going on with Selena Gomez? We haven't seen her online, it seems like, in a while. Girl, there are 309 million confused people today because Selena Gomez just admitted that she took a break from social media, but it turned into a five and a half, four and a half year hiatus. Wait, four and a half she years. Says, yes. She said that she has not been scrolling for four and a half years, and she actually feels normal again. Now, I have a, I have a theory on why this all happened. If you remember, when she and Justin Bieber broke up, there was a lot of Haley versus Selena mm -hmm. moments online and on Twitter. And I think it got too much for her to handle. And she took the break and realized after a few months, wow, this feels great. It's happy. Yeah, but, I get you it. Know, Mm -hmm. I get it too, but I can't believe all the things she's missed online. Can you believe she's missed like Jenna's thirst trap? Like, <laughs> how, how could one get through life without seeing the thirst trap? By the way, I don't right. know. I could have missed it today. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Thank Justin, you, Justin, love you. Thank you. You can catch Justin weekdays on our daily pop on our sister network E. All right, come back tomorrow. Join us on today. It's going to be a good one. We've got not just one, but two big stars in our studio, Michelle Pfeiffer and Mark Wahlberg. Cannot wait to catch up with them. See you tomorrow. Lean out. Lean out. Bye. Bye. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Again, I almost got out of this one clean. Turn it down. Oh my God, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started.
Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friend, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed them a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is... First, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, okay. Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch. I and too. I try to do it, but I end up, I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with our bread. Okay. I'm going to use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread, because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. You choose what you would like. I'm going to okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm going to try whole wheat, too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? we'll see. I do both sides. This is the side that's going to go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically want to kind of smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did want to do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not, you know, smothering it. But I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but hmm. okay, there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which shocked I, me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer on the counter. My grandma did that. My mom did that. And then it's nice and soft. Exactly. You're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you. Did I do enough? Okay, now we're going to use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice. Like yes. some of my so, white American that... cheese is thick. Right. So if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. But... Okay. Um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what? we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ooh. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay? So, eh, already, already screwed all right. up. It's all right, this is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but it's okay. okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, Pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> exactly. So and that's your lunch. Yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, what did we put on this? Nothing? No. Nope. No, because no, no oil, no, no. cooking the, spray. The butter is, is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. After that, oh, by the way, we have some. Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. that, to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, there exactly. We go. Okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and. That's funny because I, what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and oh. gets nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half or a pot? Not glass. I would use, again, like a metal bowl or a pot. You could use a pot. Okay. Whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have <laughs> I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um, I know. Right, it's we're going to flip them now. See, I find that you hard. You need to use your yeah. fingers. Oh, is that to make okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. perfect. But now the now cheese is not press melted. It down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the yep. burger dome. I'm going to get one of these. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, this like is that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, 
ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, see, look at the no. meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, look that. great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, rectangles. rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mmm. That's mm. so good, mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh my gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. <laughs> we did it. Grilled cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> season two. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. We're going to make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower, Blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay. Sneaking in vegetables. Yep. Is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We want to always season our oh, water yes. before. So you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay. Because you're a very um, generous person. Yes, but not with salt. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes. So it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb that. I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can. It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger. Yeah. Just like pour some in. Oh, that just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. OK. How about right. that? Okay. Good, All good, right. good. OK, pour in. This is a pound of elbow mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. OK. You should be good. OK. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> okay. We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the Angel! microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but. You know what? I on know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar, okay. eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to, I use the, yeah, the, I big, like side. the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not going to lie, my tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, this is like your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. Put it down. Are you scaring you? <laughs> yes. I'm scaring you a little bit? I'm scaring myself. OK. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to break it up because, again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will melt. Oh, see? Yeah. OK. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, what there, we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve 3 fourths cup of the cheese. Can it live together? Yep. OK. OK, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come over yes. here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower's I'm going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot. And why don't we drain the pasta? OK. All right. 
Let me guess, hot okay. pot? Ooh, it's heavy one too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta because that's gonna stop the cooking process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water, it'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. Okay, it's not gonna get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you want to go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Yes. I better just, bring a thing in case it's yeah, hot. Yeah, just hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay. Now we are going to cut that open, and we're going to pour it right into the blender. So All right. That. So now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One we have whole milk here. You can okay. use two percent, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's gonna add yeah. flavor. And right. it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature. If oh. it's not, you can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. Okay, then what? Okay, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're gonna let it go just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just, we wanna blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, sound off the <laughs> children alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. Okay, Ooh, that How looks milky. Look? That looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter, All right. and we're just gonna butter our casserole dish. Just How am I over doing here. it? Okay. We're gonna, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go, like, take but the stick I just like and to stick it around. Yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and let's get the sides Your way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you know, I don't so OCD. You really you are. Go. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. That's a little more. You like can do much. more. Yeah. yeah, like I like to yeah, get Yeah, I would get there. a good goop. I usually just take the stick. Am I getting the sides There's nothing wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides and bottom. This is where my type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't want, I want every side done just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up, you know? I want to get an Perfect. A. I want to get an A. A plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay. okay. That's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, gonna be or mise en place. Absolutely, wow. Or mise Impressed. en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that. I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know that a, one stick It's about is a half, half of the a stick. stick. Yeah, so it's like that. Perfect, and okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right, it's really pretty. Seems like and it's having it a good time. it smells good. Yeah, this is what cooking should be. <laughs> You can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Crock and then add when the... we add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't because do that. Because we want to activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we... to you? It's looking good, yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to. I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just am like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're going to add our milky okay, cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I want to get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine <laughs> have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know. I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this as little at a time Switch. thing? Like no, this, or can you, I just dump it you've already on? added the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's this is, start to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now, is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of, the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly. Cook for one to two minutes until thickens. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like once you kind of lift it, you want to just see some of it, some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah, it's like it a is, baby. You always have to be watching. Five it. minutes of of like babysitting. Yeah. All right. It seems cooked. Yeah. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. 
All right, we're just gonna dump it in. Okay, yep, and then just continue to stir. I wanna have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part. Too. Yeah, this it looks pretty so yummy. So cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the nice. magic. Magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it or are you trusting me? I'm gonna trust you. I trust your palate. I think it needs a little salt. Some salt, go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot though. Okay. It's pretty tasty. There you go. More? I mean, there's salt in the cheese naturally, and so, you know, that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm gonna grab. Like, I don't want to over salt. The but pasta. I, don't I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can. Now what happens? Put some on. Now I'm gonna break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that it doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the add. pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it you off. Okay, want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's off. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real that up. good. I would eat it, it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's gonna get so nice and baked and crispy on the top and mm -hmm. because we're gonna add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm gonna transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Do you feel good ready. about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I it again, but I'm just gonna well, trust. Well, you transferred. Okay. I kinda like this, I'm not doing any work. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got Ready? it? Yeah. Yum. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yep. While you do that. Love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes. day, could you I could do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in, in the fridge, just make sure, you know, you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> Good job. All right. High five. Yay! Who made Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time? When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. So the mac and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers, Yum. chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right? And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first, why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're going to add three fourths cup to this 
pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans because mm -hmm. it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with you know the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're gonna use three egg whites. Have you ever separated? I have, I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg want, whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try okay, and you great. can grade me. And then yeah, you can put the... Um, egg whites. Egg white there. will go in here, mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Egg yolk. There we go. Oh shoot, okay. You got any extra eggs? Just, and it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. like this is not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah, that's perfect. But I'm gonna give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh really? It'll it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the. Oh my gosh, that's so much right, better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup of panko. Pan yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One and cup just of that. It around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just laying just it on the pan. Just lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. So it could be a plate, could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously, the word of the day. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point other than like the Parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. That That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. And I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but it's always a little yeah. it's questionable exactly. what they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake them. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So I'm just dropping mm -hmm. it? How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? Yes. And you can, can yeah, then. perfect. Okay. That's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is going to get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> From season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. I can smell the chicken. It's almost done. Yeah. We're going to make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. We're going to add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. Okay. Any old ketchup? Yep. And oh. you can like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like more, mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's, it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants. Oh, this is uh, a, tablespoon? a tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow. Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids. So yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up. Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can or? use that, whatever. Yeah. Until it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh. It is the stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah's sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, Done. perfect. That's good. All right, now why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay. Well, let's let's let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken? Because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare Stand obsessively. This there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh. here. Okay. And then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw them on there. And then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. They look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, it got that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and... I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Ooh. Okay. All right, you grab no, that. I still haven't learned this technique I will well. grab... That was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this. And we can eat. Yum. Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful. Can That's I serve, hot. Serve you up some. Yes, please. Look at how oh you see. It's good. And look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm gonna see if I can taste okay. a cauliflower. Yep, that's the real test. Well, the real test will will come. Will come. Let's see. Just a little. I'm just gonna use my hands to take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. Now this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Bon appetit. Cheers, bon Cheers. appetit. Cheers, okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower Me too. First. I just wanna see. so hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. gonna get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the um, way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no right. It tastes good. There's no right and mm -hmm. wrong when it comes to kid food. <laughs> you are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have. Picky eaters combined. Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good, and now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. All right. An excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you, too. <laughs>